Hey everyone, and welcome to Television from the Multiverse, the DC TV podcast from Mailfuzz TV. I am Peter, and sitting over there in the red corner, he may be a little intoxicated still. Uh, you may notice that this episode's a little bit later than usual. Uh, not by much, but certainly... I mean, actually, it was actually later than last, last week, because last week we had to delay it till like Monday night, but later than what it normally would be with the new episodes. Because uh, we had power outages last night, and we had other things to catch up on before we got to this. We also hadn't seen Arrow, and the choice became record, get it up a little bit earlier, or watch Arrow together, which Connor gets drunk for, give him a little bit of time to sober up, and then start recording. Which we've done, we've watched Arrow, that'll be included. But, you're still a little bit... <laughs> yeah, the, the reality is, not as much time to sober up as I usually have. Which is like 24 hours normally. Normally. So, so that, is, that is the stance. But what are we talking about this week? Well, of course we have the debut of Black Lightning. This is the first show that's launched since we've started this. Uh, so that's pretty fun. Uh, so we got that, episode one of that. We also got, obviously, Supergirl returned, The Flash returned, Arrow returned. And as promised, we are still doing one episode of Young Justice a week. Because uh, we want to get through that before the new season starts sometime later in 2018. So that is what's coming up on the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's also worth mentioning that we already recorded Young, uh, not Young Justice, sorry. We already recorded the Black Lightning review. That went up on its own on YouTube. Uh, but it will be edited into this f- as the first thing. So after I've done intro yeah. and doing the small talk bit and any bit of news we have, uh, that'll appear. So if you've already seen that review and you want to skip it, you can go to the timestamps, just skip ahead to Supergirl, and then uh, on following weeks it'll just be kind of in the slot that it would be in terms of chronology, where, where, where things aired, but this week it's first, because it's new. Yes, which means it essentially takes the typical Legends of Tomorrow slot, although obviously that's moving as well. Yeah, so that, that almost means nothing now at this point, since everything's moving. It'll be so. Supergirl, Flash, Black Lightning for the but, next, you know, three weeks yes and then things will change because legends is going to take supergirl so legends will be first that'll, that'll be weird that'll be weird it will be weird first. yeah uh but you know th- things things are getting weird so here we are and then oof, we're just crept on fit on when, fit in when that starts oh my that, that that's a good question we hadn't considered that it's on a wednesday so technically we should do it before arrow but it's not cw verse so it feels yeah. like we forgot uh, to figure out where the non-CW things fit. The end. Easy. Uh, so, <laughs> Good answer. So, we're going to get into the shows. Uh, first things first, though, there was just a little bit, a teensy, teensy bit of news. Uh, just, uh, we, we heard, I think it was Brandon Ruth casually mentioned, oh yeah, Kid Flash is going to be on Legends. Uh, yep. If only for a little while. That was the exact phrasing. Uh, or near exact, I mean not in the exact words, but that was the, the sentiment. Um, and but then we got news stories just yesterday, I think, uh, from sites flat out just saying that he's joining the, joining the show as a regular. Uh, yeah, what, what, I think it was the EW who got yeah, the the scoop. The specifics were he is going to appear first in episode eleven, and then he will become a proper member in episode thirteen. So he, he's missing twelve, which is. You know, whatever. Yeah, I, I didn't see the 11 part. I just saw 13, he's a regular. Yeah, I think he's appearing but, first in 11, which is the second episode back. I'll take your word for it, because that sounds plausible enough, but I just saw 13 regular. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, I uh, mean, we've been saying this for a while, that Wally should be on Legends, so... Yeah, I mean, they need a speedster, the, the Flash, the show... Doesn't but, need Wally. Doesn't doesn't know what to do with them. They keep having to write them out of things in weird yeah. ways just so that they don't have to deal with two speedsters. You know what? Perfect. Put them on, put them on Legends, you'll fit right in. Should be fun. I'm down for it. And this will be after the Constantine stuff, right? I mean, assuming Constantine's only one episode, then sure. Yeah. Uh, I mean, maybe he'll overlap with Eleven with his appearance there, but then by the time he's a regular, maybe, maybe Constantine's wrapped up completely in three episodes. I, I don't know. It may just be one episode, Constantine. I don't, I don't. Yeah, I, I don't expect much from Constantine. Uh, but, uh, no, so, so, good news. It is. We Like I said, we've been saying this for a while. He needs somewhere to go. We want him to be around, obviously, because yeah. we enjoy him. But he's kind of wasted on the flash. Yeah, no, so uh, that's good stuff. Uh, so that's, that's basically it in terms of news. There's one little Supergirl thing related to, but I'll I'll, I'll save that for the Supergirl review itself, 
because it fits into the conversation with that. I'm not sure I know what this is. <laughs> it's a minor thing. It was it was in a, it was in one of the, the previews for the rest of the season, but it's worth mentioning, I think. Oh, I haven't watched any of the previews for the season. Yeah, uh, don't worry, it's not a spoiler. It's oh, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so so the first review, as we say, is the the previously recorded Black Lightning review. I almost said Black Mirror. There's too many shows start with the word black. Black Lightning, Black Mirror, Black uh, Black Sales is one. I mean, we don't do that, but no, you know. we don't. There's only two that we cover. I mean, character-wise, we have Black Canary. There you go. So far, but I feel it's a very common thing to put black in front of a, a in front of a word for your title. A lot of things do it. Uh, oh, black is. Christmas is one of my favorite Christmas horror movies. <laughs> I've never watched it, but maybe this October or m- maybe December. Who knows? It might, it might shake up a bit. Uh, uh, Margot Kidder's in that, who of course uh, was Lois Slane in the Superman. So I'm I'm just tying it back into DC. I'm keeping it. Yeah, keeping it in the on topic. We're yeah. good at this. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, oh dear. She also guested on Smallville, but that was because she was in Superman, so that's not. That doesn't count. That doesn't count. Uh, oh, we didn't have to watch Smallville this week. It was great. Uh, How so... nice was that? I know it was <laughs> no, great. No, seriously. Can we take a second to appreciate we didn't watch Smallville? Do you know what it was? I-, I was saying all the previous week, well, somebody save me, and then the shows came back and saved me. Just be glad I, I didn't did, try and do. And just be glad I did not do that in tune. I was tempted to actually belt it out in in tune. Or the worst part is, like, I'm still a bit drunk, <laughs> and I'm sure the audience can tell. But I just heard you sing it. <laughs> like, I, I know you didn't, but in my mind, you did. No, I, I just drew, I drew out the save because that's what they're doing in the song. They sort of let that last, but that's that's, yeah. that's all I did. I, I, okay. Yeah, I, I, I'm aware of that. I know uh-huh. that's what you did. But I heard it like you sang it anyway, and it was it was it was beautiful. You did a good job. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so that 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 is what's coming up first. Uh, our Black Lightning review, which is fairly positive. So uh, I won't say any more because you're about to hear us talk about it for almost forty minutes. That's how long that lasted. So did we go that long? It was like 30, 39 minutes. Yeah. Jesus. Uh, I'm actually, I'll cut out the. Uh, the, the, intro the, and outro. the intro and outro parts, but yeah. So this is a Black Lightning season one episode one. It's the premiere. It's called the Resurrection, uh, which I remember. I never got that up. I just remembered it. I'm proud of myself. Uh, so here you go. Enjoy our review of Black Lightning. We will start spoiler free because it's an episode one, uh, and we'll warn you before spoilers. So here we go. So this is the new DC show. This is the uh, the fifth <laughs> Greg Berlanti DC show uh, on yes. the CW, and. It's a it's a smaller character that I feel like less people. I mean, not not that everyone has, has heard of all the legends characters, of course, but uh, in terms of getting their own show, this is probably the the, the lesser known character. This is Black Lightning. Uh, I don't have a a great deal of familiarity with the character. I mean, I've heard of him. Yeah, I know of him. I think I've read him in a couple of things here or there. Yeah, but nothing. I've heard nothing of his daughters. Major. I think his biggest claim to fame. I think he was on the Outsiders. The team that Batman ran at one uh, point. That, that sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah. I, th- I think that was his main claim to fame in the comics. Uh, but this is what the show's based on. And one of the things I actually like about the show is the premise is that he's actually... He's been a hero before. That was something he did in his past. And he's older yeah. now. And he's got daughters who are... One's still in high school, one's a bit older. She actually works at the high school. Because uh, Jefferson, who's Black Lightning, he is now the principal of the high school. He's He's been out of the game for nine years. He's been trying to... Sort of still be a good person and try and, you know, help the neighbourhood. Better his community. Yeah, but do it in a more sort of normal, by the rules kind of way. Yeah. By the book, I suppose what I meant to say there, but you know what I mean. Uh, so, I like that idea. I like the idea that he's pulled back into it in some way. Uh, it makes it a little bit different from the other shows, because obviously I think one of the questions you have to ask into another superhero show at this point is, is this one too many? <laughs> because we have a lot of yeah, them. Yeah, and I, I'd go out on a limb and say this as a first episode, is better than most of the other CW shows' first episodes by its nature of not being an origin. Yeah, actually, I, I, I would agree with that. I, actually, I mean, I would take away the nature of it not being its origin and just say that on par, I, I think it is actually better than most of the other pilots. I, I think it is as well, but even regardless of you know actual taste, quality, and all the other things that we're going to get into in this discussion, mm. just on premise alone... It's not an origin where every single other one has been, and uh, okay, I'm kind of bored of that now. Yeah, but I think if you take that out of the equation, it doesn't like it's still better, which is, is it I think probably is. Yeah, I think I think it's just better the, produced and better. Re- well, actually, I think the biggest thing is that the acting is 
generally because we always talk about in Supergirl how she kind of elevates the show. Not that the rest are bad. There's some there's some girl are good actors, but she being the lead, she she you know Melissa Benoist being the one who's kind of anchoring the whole show. She kind of elevates the material, and some of the other actors do as well uh, in certain scenes. We've seen you know uh, we've seen it happen with Alex. We've seen it happen with uh, with John. We've seen it happen with uh, uh, when <laughs> God damn it. See, it's right. been off six, six weeks off. And I know. Then this, it I all know. goes to shit. The show's been off six weeks, and I'm forgetting characters' names. Uh, you can tell I've not watched this week's episode of Supergirl yet. <laughs> oh. uh, dear. Um, but anyway, so you've seen what happened with them. But I think the, the the thing that really stuck out to me in this show is I think the actor playing Jefferson, what's his name, Chris Williams. I think he's really good. I think he has gravitas. I think he has a an air of like you know wise middle aged man about him, even though he's like you know he has that kind of uh, maturity yeah. to him uh, no, definitely. which kind of like again it's something different to the other CW shows he's he's older than all the other leads that's true yeah it sets it apart um, as well as the setting as well of course I mean this is very clearly the, the black focused hero you, we've had team we've had the two sort of regular white dudes I suppose and we've had of course Supergirl being the, the female focused show uh, this yeah. is very clearly supposed to be the black focused show and I think uh, so the acting from him and I think the two daughters as well are also very good Like I, I feel like yeah None of them felt like they were, oh, this is the weak TV link actor of the bunch uh, out of our main leads. No, definitely not. And most shows have one. No, yeah. Not even even good shows. Like, oh, most sure. Of them have. Yeah. I, I think if I was going to pick one who might be the weaker link just now, it might be the ex-wife. Uh, yeah, Lynn. that's the one I was going to as now, well. Beca- mainly because in this episode, she's kind of just the, she's the, uh, the archetypical... Uh, you shouldn't be doing this character. And that's yeah. kind of all she is for this episode. Now, there's potential that she could become much more than that and be much better than that. But at least in this pilot, it, that's she's kind of what bad, she is. She's not bad, but she's probably the most generic part of the show. Yeah, she's, yeah that's going to be a point. She's generic uh, compared to everyone else who feels a little bit different. Um, I think the other thing I'd say about this show from the first episode is that the subject matter it's dealing with is a lot darker than the other shows. Yeah, there's a scene. Uh, yeah, I won't say anything about it, but I think it's yeah. like the, the first or second scene, and it's possibly the most real and intense thing I've seen on the CW ever. <laughs> yeah, there's that scene, of course, which is very uh, timely. I will just, we'll just say, politically speaking, yeah. it's just a timely sort of scene to have. Uh, but even just some of the subject matter and the threat from the bad guys later on in the episode, I felt like. Oh, we've never seen any characters in the Flash be threatened with this. <laughs> no, it's true. They oh, yeah. obviously it's it's not really. And say, oh, there's a bunch of gangs in the area, and that's yeah. you know part. Well, one of the in particular, the, the one in particular. But they mentioned there are others. Yeah, the one hundred is the name of the main gang that we're yeah. dealing with. But and and uh, we've seen superhero shows deal with gangs before, like you know, all over the place. But they, it, this, this they are treated a bit differently here. Well, yeah, they have characters. They're not just the the, the, the faceless gang. That they're just there to be bad exactly. guys and henchmen to, to fight. You know, I mean, sure, there's, there's red shirt villains. Don't get me wrong. He's punching people at times, but uh, there, there's the the leader. There's there's, there's the sort of the main one under him that we kind of like follow and stuff. Like we have characters that we're kind of kind of building. Um, and I think so. I just clearly like the episode. Just just from oh, the, yeah. the general tone I've got going here, which uh, I'm, I'm about to say I did quite like it. I, I think. There's one or two points where I'm like, okay, that, that that's where maybe there's a clash of the tone it's going for and the typical superhero shenanigans. That... Yeah, one for me in particular that really starts is a music choice in an action sequence. Mm. It's got a you know a hip hop track going as he's going through doing his thing. And I'm like, okay, this is this is cool, it, it, but the moment that it's actually going to feels like it needs a bit more gravitas in the music than just the hip hop track, which is okay. I get what they're going for tonally with that but maybe not at this point yeah it almost felt like it, okay this this will sound cool and i feel like the subject matter is beyond just being cool like you're actually going for something a bit more weight here and i think typically it kind of does that there's a, there's a great scene in the middle where we and again we're still spoiler free but uh jefferson goes to the sort of the local gang leader to uh, talk about an incident that happened at school and basically we find out that he has kind of an agreement with the gangs that the school's kind of a safe zone like you know nothing happens at the schools and the yeah. gang leaders for you know we'll maybe explore this more as we go on but for whatever reason they're they're on board with this and they agree and there's no trouble on either side mm. but something happened and he goes to speak to this gang leader and we see him like treat this kid that's kind of around the gang headquarters uh, kind of poorly. This, you know, the the Lala's the, the the guy's name, the character's name, the the gang leader, and he 
He's, he's been like this rough with this kid. And of course, we've seen Jefferson be a high school principal. He's been a teacher. We see him walking around. There's a scene where he's actually walking around the halls and he's just like, he's quickly saying things to various students that he's got things going on with. Like, uh, yeah, like, tuck that shirt in. Yeah. No, even just like, like he's, he's, there's someone who's uh, working on a yearbook and he's like, hey, I've got the, the first prints of the yearbook. Come and yeah. see me later. So, and it's like, he seems to have a good, really good rapport with the, the kids mm, where he's definitely. talking to them all. Um, and we see him wa- have to watch this, this gang leader, you know. Uh, I don't want to say assault, but just aggressively, like uh, discipline. We'll say the, the kid, and yeah. you can see the uncomfort in his face. Like he's uncomfortable watching this, and this is not how he wants things to be done. And of course, they're from two different worlds. But I think that that conflict of, uh, you know, I've tried to do better by being a principal, and and a lot of ways I have, but there's a lot of things that are kind of going on anyway. There, there are still people that are being failed. Yeah. Um, and obviously, a lot of the episode is about him. What draws him back out into the the superhero uh, life, if yeah. you will? Uh, I will say, there's nothing in this episode that actually says it can't be in the, the CW verse. There's not. We've been told it's not, but they, they there's nothing at this point that means it can't be. I, f- I, f- I feel like next crossover, they're just going to be like, oh, by the way, it's in the same world. Just go with it. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> as, like- as of right now, sure. Well, because, I mean, I, I, the key point I'll bring up here to support the idea that it could be is that no one seems surprised that someone has superpowers. Like, they talk about, like, how Black Lightning was this vigilante, he did these things, but no one ever talks about how it's weird that he has powers. I, I, to be fair, though, because we don't know how long he was active for when he was, so it might have just been a case that he mm. normalised it. Like, you know, they had that discussion of, oh, that, this is weird okay. powers. They did that already, you know, a decade ago. And now it's just like, okay, powers are a thing. Okay, I don't know. I just I feel like there's a normalcy to it that so if they tell me in a season or two, oh by the way, it happens to be set in the same universe. I'll yeah, sure, it's fine. Like sure, I guess, I guess the the problem is why didn't uh, you know it's it's the ultimate problem of on those other shows. Why didn't we hear about this guy running around a decade ago? Um, why, why did we? no one ever mention him? I I, I don't know. You'd feel like that'd be national news. Yeah, maybe. I feel like it's a smaller enough example somewhere else in the country that I don't I don't need to buy that the, the, these characters would bring him up, especially if they treat him like a myth, like where he was kind of like, oh, uh, the local press would talk about him as if he's like a myth or something, but... Oh, it, no, that's fair. There was never necessarily footage of him like blasting lightning at things and stuff that went viral or anything like that. Yeah, no, that's quite possible. Can I just say, it, 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 it's, it makes me feel really old when the, the big gap in the show is nine years and I'm like, I was already an adult nine years ago. This is <laughs> like this. This doesn't feel like an old era. It feels like no. This is still just modern times nine years ago. What are you doing? It does, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. I mean, nine years ago was what two thousand nine. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah. Christ, I had to think about that far too long. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, so uh, making me feel old. Show uh, all our shows are doing that recently. Runaways, especially, was bad for it. With I, th- that. I think it might be just a sign that you're old. And you as well. Hey, I'm I'm significantly younger than you. Thank you very much. It's not significantly. It's it's enough. <laughs> it's like three or four enough. years. It's not significant. Significantly enough. Well, the same generation, you little turd. Significant enough. You hey, in Runaways, when she looked at that VHS tape and said, "What the hell is this?" You were equally just, "Oh my god, I'm so old." You equally <laughs> had the same thoughts. So shut up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. So shut up. Uh, yeah, so cast is good. Like I say, I think there's a couple of superhero like archetypes or tropes that kind of clash almost with the otherwise serious tone. But there are yeah. some genuinely kind of tense and serious moments that I was not expecting this to go down so quick. Um, no, it, it opens with with them and it's like, oh no, no, that's what this show is. Yeah, but it does it multiple times throughout the episode because I was almost thinking, oh, we've done that now. We're going to just kind of... Like, th- that was going to be the big mission statement in the first scene, kind of just to set the-, the world up. But then I was ex- half expecting them to just kind of, like, tone it down after that. And it didn't really do that. It did other darker things throughout the episode. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so, I appreciate that. Uh, like I said, I mean, I, I really like the main trio. Uh, obviously, James Remar is kind of the-, the Alfred character. <laughs> you know, he's yes. the guy who helps him build stuff. And he's a tailor and he's got a secret pa- layer. Yeah, patches him up a bit. You know, the yeah. usual sort of stuff. I mentioned this before we started recording. He's got a moustache, and he—he's the right age now that he looks like Commissioner Gordon. 
He, he, he looks like he could be playing that character. Uh, I do like James Remar. Uh, my only worry from from his perspective, though, is that in this episode, at one point when he's saying, "Oh, you, you should be doing this. You're destined to do this," like you know, the, the city needs black lightning. I was getting severe Dexter flashbacks because when he was, you know, the dead dad in Dexter's head in that show, it was just, it was reminding me a lot of that. I'm like, all right, I did, <laughs> let's let's quickly get past those memories, shall we? Yeah. I won't forget that show. Thank you very much. I, I never had the misfortune. Hey, it started off as a good show. Yeah, but by the time I was like, oh, maybe it was already getting into the point where people were starting to to jump off. I just went, do you know what? I'm not putting myself through that. The, uh, the yeah, the last half of the show was not kind. Yeah, I, no. I never even watched the final season, and then I heard how it ended, and I was glad that I didn't watch the final season. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, my request going forward is, can they please slow down the the closing credits a touch? I would like to be able to catch some of the names. Oh, in this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, not on Dexter. Yeah, we're back, we're, back, we're back on Black Lightning. Yeah. I, I was like trying to catch who was doing the music on this one, ah. and it just cuts through them so quickly. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Slow down. Mm. Yeah. It's just uh, not possible. So yeah, it's pretty good. Got a couple of nitpicks. There's a couple of, you know, uh, like there's an inspector character who's kind of like, Oh, he's part of the police, but he's kind of part of the problem, and we're, we're kind of seeing how him playing by the system too much has kind of made him part of the problem. And it's kind of like Jefferson realizing that and noticing that's kind of one of the themes of the first episode. Um, and there's that kind of consp- uh, comparison there. Uh, he's okay, but he's he's kind of just what he is as a character, plot wise. He is at the minute, but it's they're, they're the sort of things that I'll forgive for a few episodes because you know, oh, first yeah. episode you focus on your your main stuff well, and actually, then move out from there. Here's something I do want to praise this first episode about. Is I, di- I actually feel like this didn't really suffer too much from rushed pilot syndrome. No, no, I don't think it did. Certainly not to the same extent that most pilots do, of this kind. No, I think there was a few points, but because it wasn't an origin story, they didn't know quite how to handle a few things, so we got just some exposition of, mm. here's who this guy is, here's who he was. I'm like, okay. And there was like three or four times where I felt they just read a paragraph at me so that I was caught up on a few things. Yeah, I actually, which... I, th- I think the weakest part of the episode actually is a couple of quick little flashback moments. Yeah. And I actually think those are the weakest scenes of the episode because I, I feel like they're just there to try and like fill us in a little bit just to quickly explain. Yeah, I didn't really need it. Uh, but I think that's why it's not rushed is because they're just giving us the exposition in a couple of paragraphs. So they're not rushing the other elements. Yeah, the, the problem with that, though, is that the information feels deeply uninteresting to hear about. It does, yeah. Uh, and I actually think it would almost work a little bit better if they let some of it just be a mystery. We'll find out. You know, we've got a season of a TV show to watch. We'll, yeah. we'll get I mean, it as the, we go. There's, there's one part, you know, he, he's getting introduced onto the stage. And it's like, right, here's this guy's history. Here's everything you need to know. He it's was, that... you know, he's Olympia. And he, you know, he, <laughs> it's all a this silly, stuff. silly long introduction, yeah, just to explain to the audience all these different things about him. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so I mean that's just network TV. They feel they have to over-explain stuff. They have to dumb things down. They have to make sure they say things five times just in case we miss it. It, it felt more noticeable here though because everything else was taking its time. That yeah, no, every, everything else was pretty well paced. I I appreciate that. So I think with that we'll say spoiler warning. We'll say full spoilers and we will go into the the plot of the episode and the the, the various things that stuck out as being dark is the first thing I want to talk about. So I don't recall. Any characters on Flash or even Arrow being threatened with being turned into a prostitute and being doped up to do so? No. See, see, see when that that came up because so so the younger daughter you know wants to go party and she says she's going to a house party. Her big sister lets her, but it turns out she's actually going to a club. And this is this you know gang member. Uh, I didn't catch his name actually. Well, no, Will. That's his name. Name's Will. <laughs> Uh, did catch it <laughs> and I just looked at it there and saw it uh, but he he's like sort of chatting her up and then these other gang members come in and they end up going to the boss man Lala and it's a very uncomfortable scene because he, uh, she's just sort of dragged along even though she just met him and Lala she just happens to be with him yeah he keeps speaking down to her and then when Will kind of implies oh that's my girl and she's like I'm not your girl I just met you and she gets a little you know she needs him the balls at one point which is a really nice little moment because up until that point she's been spoken down to so much by Lala so like, no you shut up woman no you just stay quiet like, you just keep saying things like that we're speaking here be quiet know your place that kind of you know attitude uh, so her needing him the balls was extremely satisfying at that moment but then he's like, oh yeah, maybe we should take her over to the motel and make her work off some of your debt. And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> We're going this dark? Yeah, yeah. So quick. And he's just, you know, he just goes, yep, yeah, sure, mum, that, that sounds fair. Yeah, it, it, it's ultra dark. And obviously this is the big thing that makes uh, 
makes Jefferson, you know, he's like, okay, I'm going to get at my daughter. He, he comes in and does his yeah. thing, and he, 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 he mostly stays out of the sight and stuff and whatnot. And obviously, you mentioned the opening scene where they're pulled over by the police right after they left the police station, might I add. Because uh, yes. the older daughter was protesting the gangs, and a, lot, a bunch of them got arrested. So she, she, she's in lock up. Yeah, I'm a little unclear on that because she says, oh, you know, it was this peaceful protest. But he does go, yeah, but there was, you know, all this stuff set on fire. I'm like, okay. To me, it sounds like it started peaceful, but there were some... Got, got out of hand a bit, Because yeah. yeah, I think, you know, let's say 70% shot for a peaceful protest, then you have the 30% who want to start... It's no longer peaceful, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. I, yeah I, I just could have done with a bit of more clarification, because he made it sound like, no, it was never going to be peaceful. And, you know, I just, you know, just a little bit on that would have been nice. I, I think that's a fair... Uh, thing though i think you could say that he, that, that's kind of his point here is that she was naive to think maybe that, yeah maybe but again could have could have done with a bit of that being said you know in this mm. conversation got obviously it gets cut short unfortunately got some gr- well yeah it gets cut short because uh, the cops pull them over uh because someone robbed a liquor store and he even points out the hypocrisy what because throughout the whole thing while he's been handcuffed and while they're trying to like ask the daughters to like come out the car and you know all the various things he's just yelling put it on your phone just do what they say he's trying to like He's doing what he can to make sure no one's, you know, getting hurt. Yeah, because you know, the daughters are in the car and, and they're being told to put their hands on the dashboard, but one of them's filming it, and she's like, "No, I've got a right to film this." And Which again have... feels very yeah. current, very topical. Yeah, and and he, obviously they've got the guns out and stuff, and he's having none of it. He's like, "No, no, just just put your hands down." Yeah, obviously his attitude here is, "No, no, daughters, be safe. I don't want any of you doing something that's going to like cause a reaction, and then I'll." You know, I'll have a, you know, I'll, because it's after, because they take him up to the, the car and there's like an old Chinese woman in the back seat and they're like, oh, is this the guy? And she's like, no. And they just, I said, let him go. Have a nice night, sir. Go away. Uh, and he's like, what? What's this about? You know, even tell me why I was like forced up against the car and, you know, in the rain, everything else. And he's like, well, what was the description? A black guy. And because he's wearing a suit, he's going to this fundraiser to be like given an award. He's in a yeah. suit. He's in like a small family car. He's got two daughters in the car. Like, what part of this fit the description other than the fact that I'm pro- that he's probably black? Like, you know, give, give me one other thing. And uh, also, how they could tell that at night in a car. Yeah. I, yeah. The, the, the whole thing. Uh, so, obviously, it's very, very political, very topical. Um, and that's where I think the, the inspector guy comes in because we see him at the fundraiser and at one point there's like a small comment where he's like oh by the way I'll see about those people who pulled, pulled you over they're not, they're not some of mine and it feels like okay but you, you kinda, it's starting that thing where he's part of the system so even though yeah it, it's kind of doing this thing where he's like okay no that was wrong I'll I'll have him look, look into but yeah. at the same time it feels like no no this is so every day that he hasn't even noticed yeah yeah uh, so no, it's raising all these things and I think the 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 tension while he's been handcuffed and he's begging his daughters to just cooperate, and then the anger afterwards when he's just yelling at the cop, at dem- you know, demanding like, you know, what's the justification for this? Like, you just did this, then justify it. Tell me why this happened. Uh, all of it felt real. All of, all of the emotion in the scene felt really good, and it's especially impressive when it's you know two minutes into the, the episode, three minutes yeah, into the episode. It was when when that because you know when they're in the police station at the very start, I'm like, okay, this is this is fine, but there's nothing to it yet. It's you know, it's yeah. it's an opening. And then this happens, I'm like, okay, I'm interested now. Yeah, and they, 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 it was shot really well. I thought it was really well handled with the camera work. Yeah, which yeah, is real cool. nice lighting as well. Yeah, because you've got the, uh, the the police lights on the car, uh, yeah. you know, red and blue and whatnot, and it's just giving it some atmosphere. So it was really well handled, and it really set you in. So, okay, this is what we're going to deal with, subject matter. As I said, we're, and I think that scene beforehand is a little bit important, though, because you have just that little bit of like the sister complaining, oh, that's my dress, you took my dress. You know, it's just a little bit of... Yeah, yeah. Just a little bit of normal human stuff, just to, like, okay, here's your characters, here's what they like, the two sisters bickering, very relatable. You, you get them right yeah, away. Yeah, there's, there's nothing wrong with that scene. On its own, when you're first watching it, you're like, okay, this is fine. You know, yeah, yeah. Obviously, there's nothing there to grab you at this point, but there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, but but you know, it gives just a little bit. You get he's the dad. He's kind of pissed off yeah. that his daughter's doing this, and he cares about his thing that he's going to. Uh, the sisters are bickering because they're sisters, and that's what they do. And then it's like this all happens. It's like it just does enough to say, like, okay, no, so, so they're not caricatures. They're they're real people first, and then you put them in the scene, and it it, it works tenfold because of that. It, it, yeah. it would have been effective on its own if this was if it just opened with them in the car. It would have still worked, but it worked just that little bit better because we just get a little bit of time beforehand to just get a sense of who they were first. Agreed. As definitely. people. So, uh, and then from there, as we say, we have all the other things. Uh, and yeah, you know, so not only, we have this scene where Will, after being, he kind of comes to see Jennifer, the younger daughter, at the school. And again, she's still a student. 
uh, and he sort of just like kind of comes up to her outside the building and it, she just wants to get away she's like uncomfortable like you know all that stuff that almost happened all this stuff uh, and the big sister Anissa comes in and actually shows that she's kind of capable of taking care of herself she yeah it looks like uh, Jefferson's t- maybe taught his daughters a thing or two yeah just a little bit of self defence if nothing else uh, gets him on the ground and he just loses his temper he's about to go for, go for his gun this is when Jefferson and the, the, the security guards are coming out and Jefferson comes up and he actually grabs his hand on the gun he's like yeah. hey what are you going to do are you going to pull that gun out what's going to happen are you going to... And, do you know what I love I love it about this scene he never even mentions this his daughter that he, he was threatening he never even brings that up. He doesn't make it personal. He's just like, look, I I, I know you for reputation. You're you're on probation, right? There's cameras all around. You pull that out. That's it. You're Which you're away for life. I think shows he maybe has like he's at least he tries to keep aware of his his neighborhood. He, he tries oh to yeah, keep aware he's up to date on, yeah. on who's who, isn't he? I, I think working at a school helps with that because you get a sense of who everyone is through their kids. Yeah, no, definitely. And even Lala, you know, is, is an ex-student, so it's like, yeah. okay, he's he's aware of who they all are because he probably taught a lot of them at this age. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's, it's a very well done scene, but I I was not expecting the the extremely dark and uncomfortable scene again. Especially it comes after there's a debate. Uh, there's the uh, the teacher, the the assistant head teacher, or whoever it is, uh, he's got a bit of a crush on him because his ex-wife kind of points it out a few times. Oh, she's yeah. you know, got a thing for you. Uh, she's having a debate with him earlier on about uh, installing metal detectors in the school, mm. uh, which is a pretty common thing now. Is the safety question? And he's he's an insistent. No, this should not be a thing because. Uh, I'm not turning the school into something that feels like a jail, right? We're not doing yeah. that. And if, but later in the episode, after this, Will and two cronies come in. They just storm into the building, uh, past everyone, come into the classroom where Anissa is teaching, and uh, Jennifer's in the class, and just pull them both out of the class at gunpoint. It's actually a really dark scene. Like I, I was like, I was not expecting this intensity in the no. first episode. And and you have to imagine that they're they're getting metal detectors now, whether they like it or not. Uh, oh yeah, after right, this, like the, the, the border winning that debate. Yeah, at this point, I think so, yeah. Although I suppose an argument could be made that they just stormed in anyway. It wasn't a student who snuck something in. But No, no, that's true. But you imagine the, there's usually someone manning a metal detector. Oh, that's that's, that's true. Uh, at the very least, it'll just make them feel better, even if it wouldn't actually have solved this particular but, Yeah, well, that, that's the point in a yeah. lot of those things anyway, the deterrence. Just, yeah. you know, the idea of, okay, no, we can see this. Yeah. Um, so, no. And it's the... Because I think... Because at the start, I mean, obviously, you never sympathise with Bill because he, he, I mean, he's far too up for the whole. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll make this random girl I just met go go be a prostitute to yeah. settle my debt. So right away, you're never on his side. But you kind of think he's just this slimy little weasel who, you know, and he's still a weasel. Don't get me wrong. But th- th- this adds on that he's got a temper where he's willing to do something extreme immediately just because he feels like he's been upset or he's he's been humiliated. That's basically oh, what this is. And 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 we see pretty quickly that this is not approved by the by the gangs by Lala yeah because Lala is pissed at him and pistol whips him again in front of the girls it's a very dark scene uh, all yeah. this is going on um, and then he says oh yeah get rid of them make them disappear so you know it's, the implication is they're going to be killed or shipped yeah. off to be prostitutes somewhere else whatever it's going to be like that's, that's you know the implication is pretty dark either way um, and of course this is the thing because all, all through the episode because Lynn sees, of course, in the news that at the nightclub thing, okay, so, so they're saying there was black lightning back, no one really saw, but it kind of looks like it was because there was, you know, some, you know, fried... Electrical stuff going yeah, on. Yeah, someone got fried, basically, <laughs> so they're thinking, oh, yeah. black lightning's back. And she asks him, I actually really like that scene, as much as I think she's a little bit generic in her whole, oh, I don't want you doing this, I kind of like the moment where she actually unbuttons his shirt a little bit, and he's like, oh, you're not going to find anything. And I'm like, but I'm like... But she will if she just goes far enough to the right. But I love that he plays it so he's, he's so confident when he says it. That yeah, but as soon yeah, as, as, soon as she right. leaves, he's like, "Oh, my wind, <laughs> my yeah, bullet wind." Like, oh, just yeah, <laughs> <laughs> grabbing his side. It's, it's amusing. Uh, which I think I think it's the, that little. That's one of the little moments that shows me how much how good much of a good actor he is. That scene played really well as him holding that in and just yeah. playing that off as if it was normal without it feeling phony. Uh, so I, I appreciate that. Uh, but even after this, when, when you know, the, the, the inspector's like, oh, I'm going to, you know, let me do my job. And he just starts walking out immediately after and she's like, oh, where are you going? I'm getting my girls back. She doesn't even dispute. She's like, yeah, go. Do, be yeah. be Black Lightning. Go do it. Yeah. Uh, and of course, uh, James Remar, uh, Peter Gamby's character, the Alfred, <laughs> he, he's, he's got a new fancy suit waiting for him. He's like, yeah. He's been ready to go. He's been waiting. 
Well, to be fair, we, we did see him try and talk him back into it as well earlier when you know when he was mm. patching him up. So he was set like, no, text no, no, as well. The society, you know, the, the community needs you out there as Black Lightning. So it makes sense that he's been developing this. You know, he's he's yeah. been trying. He thinks that he can finally convince him, and then he'll be like, "Oh, I got this, by the way." Yeah, I tell you this. I tell you what, I did not know about Black Lightning. So he comes in, and he's got his suit on, and I like that his electrical powers kind of light up the suit, like he kind of does that. Yeah, uh, I like that. It's kind of like made to conduct his his uh, power. Um, I'll tell you what I didn't know he could do though I didn't know he could hold someone in the air with his electricity that was, mm-hmm. that came as a bit of a surprise to me when he had Will kind of lev- levitating almost yeah this is the super I'm about where he's going to get his daughters back and I get it do you want to play it cool because okay he's he's suited up for the first time now mm. he's, he's going out there and this is where you know the, the hip hop track comes in I'm like okay this is playing like it's really cool and fun because it is, it's a fun scene, the way, you know, when he's yeah. walking up, it I, I plays think, great. I think but... the right tack there would have been to play it more classically heroic than cool. Yeah. I, I would yeah, agree I with that. So. Like, I, I think it worked earlier on when he was in the nightclub. And it was... Yeah, I like it there. It's yeah. this one here where it's supposed, it's such this big moment. He's got to save his daughters. He's big... suited up for the first time again. And the threat has been so dark throughout the episode. Like, all the things that have yeah. been threatening, all these moments that have happened in front of them, it just felt like so... It makes it seem a bit easy when you put this music on it and he's just yeah. kind of th- storming through guys like that yeah th- yeah so I-, I think that is maybe my biggest criticism of the episode and it's not a big deal but it, it is worth mentioning yeah because uh, i think a lot of things the characters are the main thing and i think them being set up is working well and of course we have the big moment at the end or tease because if you're unfamiliar with uh, black lightning his daughters do also become powered individuals to become heroes uh uh anissa becomes thunder and jennifer should become lightning uh, and thunder uh, has basically super strength. It's a bit more complicated than that, but it, it basically amounts to super strength. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of science mumbo jumbo as to how she's doing it, but it's basically super strength. Uh, and that's kind of what we see a glimpse of at the end is uh, her getting her powers. Yeah, I really like that she wakes up, you know, she's hearing some of those lines, you know, the, the get mm. rid of them. And, you know, it's this, okay, the trauma's sticking with her. It's not just to be forgotten about. Yeah, yeah, it's because again, like it, it plays so horrifically when they're when her and her sister are in that that motel room and they're watching Will be pistol whipped. Like it feels terrifying. Like they sh- they should oh, yeah. be terrified by this. Uh, so I like that the the PTSD almost of it is what kind of makes the powers kind of come to the surface. Yeah. Uh, uh, I I expect that if uh, Jennifer finds out, she'll be like complaining for a little bit. Why did she get powers? Why am I, why am I not getting powers? Yeah, quite possibly. But obviously, they they don't know that their dad has powers, right? I don't know. Did they recognise him? Because he only has those goggles on. It felt like there was a moment of recognition See, to See, this is the thing. I wasn't sure. And there was a moment earlier on where the older one... Is, so, you know, after the, the, the Club 100 stuff, yeah. and they're, the, the two of them are watching the, the news report on the TV, and they're like, oh, is Black Lightning back? The older one kind of looks around. Like, she's like, okay, where's Dad? Mm, like, she... Uh, because like we know, she might know. When she was a kid, she walked in on when he was, when was all wounded. Yeah. So maybe she has an, a suspicion. Maybe not a she, knowledge. So she, she maybe has more to know. I don't think the younger one knows. Okay. Okay. But maybe, maybe I'm reading that wrong. That's just how I how I saw it. I can tell you've not learned her names yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The younger um, one. <laughs> I I don't have them next to me. So. Jennifer. <laughs> Jennifer. There we go. Hey, older and younger sufficed for that. That there. You knew. Everyone knew who was who in that conversation. Oh dear. Give me peace, damn it. So, of course, the other thing we have to talk about is Tobias, who's the, the actual big bad of the show. We see a couple of scenes with him. Uh, we see that he's the head honcho. He's in hiding. No one seems to know he's still around. That doesn't work for him. Yeah, and this is the thing. I Do they think he's dead? Because Jefferson, you know, when he's talking to uh, Je- not Alfred, he, he mentions, you know, oh, when this started, it was about killing Tobias Whale. You know, it was about mm. killing him for what he did to his parents, I think, or his, yeah. his father or something. Uh, and not Alfred, meaning Gamby. Uh, just to, there just we go. To not not right. Alfred. Yeah. Uh, he, yeah, so that implies that Black Lightning thinks he killed Tobias, which is interesting because at the end of the episode when we see Tobias with Lala and he's pissed, he shoots a harpoon at him for, for being a, you know, a wreck. I, I love that, yeah. If you've got a name, play into it. Hmm. So he, uh, he, he implies that he thinks he killed Black Lightning. He's like, I killed Black Lightning. What, you know, who is this? So. No, I, I don't think he meant literally on that one, actually. So, uh, cause really, he says, literally, okay. Because he, he's talking about how, oh, yeah, the, the resurrection. I think he just means I killed him. I made him quit. I, I made him stop being like For all intents and purposes, okay. he's dead. I kind of like the idea that they both thought they'd killed the other one. Uh, 
Okay, I, I, I wasn't reading this one that way I at mean, all. No, you may be right, but I just kind of like that idea that they both think they killed the other one, and that's and they're both in hiding, thinking that they're. I, I like that idea, but here yeah. it was more of a no, no, no. You've made him come back. This is on you, and I, you know, yeah, I, okay. I've won. I can, I can see that. I can see that. Uh, I actually, I like his henchman. He's got like this. He's got this woman who's got a really such straight fringe, right? And then he has not Max Landis as the other one. And <laughs> you're right. And they they they're kind of goofy, but they kind of work. I kind of like it. Yeah, yeah that's working for me. Uh, I, th- I think he has a, a presence. He does. He, he's got a cool look. He does. The the, the uh, he's actually he's, his facial hair's not unlike yours. Actually, he's got the big the chin curtain. He it does. It's it's a bit bigger than mine at the moment. Aye. Uh, well, I mean, you could let yours go a bit bushy. I could do. <laughs> but then then uh, I mean, then at that point it's going well. Why haven't you shaved your head and become an, uh, become an evil villain? Because uh, you're going for the Harry Knowles look, not the not the Tobias look. I'll take it. I think. <laughs> well, I can't remember the last time I, I I brought up Harry Knowles in a conversation that was relevant. I don't know when the last so, time anyone did. Is ain't, ain't it killing you still a thing? I don't know. No. <laughs> I, don't <laughs> I have think no idea. So. I have no idea. <laughs> well, did they change his name and become uh, Bleeding Kill? Has that ever happened? Did, did, did Internet Kill become Bleeding Kill? Do not kill? reference that atrocity on here. <laughs> I don't know, the integrity is kind of similar if I'm thinking about it. Um, so, <laughs> so they set him up. Um, he's, he's a little bit more comic comical, I guess. He, you know, he's kind of the classic comic book villain in his evil lair. You know, he dark bit, lighting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I like it so far, though. I, I, I like his kind of vibes. So I like it with him. I hope it keeps him in the background for a while. You know, like okay, he's the one behind the scenes. You know, calling the shots, running the gangs. Uh, yeah, I feel like that. An obvious thing is like maybe halfway through the season, like Jefferson will find out he's alive. Like he won't even know it's him that's existing. It'll be a big moment for him when he finds out. No, Tobias yeah. is still out there somewhere. He's he's pulling the strings. Uh, yeah. That's interesting. Um. But no, I actually, I, I, I do think the whole... I, I'm a fan of secret identity stuff. I know some people get really sick of it. Uh, I actually do think the idea that he's a principal during the day is going to be a really interesting dual life to, to lead. Yeah, because that's a pretty busy job as it is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it'll give him some insights, I assume. Like, maybe he'll hear that some kid's having trouble with his parents because his parents may be up to something and he'll like use that as intel and step in that's and do his thing, but... Uh, I just think it's, a, it's a different. It's different, you know, because I'm used to Superman with you know being a reporter. I'm used to you know Peter Parker being a high school teenager. Or it's whatever. different to to what have, have a secret identity with actual responsibilities. Yeah, yeah. Because um, most of them don't. Not really. I don't know. I feel like Barry Allen should have responsibilities working yeah, at a crime but, lab. Yeah, but, no, but, but this is the thing. He can just he just rushes through it anyway with, at super speed. So. That's true. He's, he's got powers to kind of cover for the fact that he's hardly there. Yeah, whereas this is he's responsible for other people in a very direct way. But it's also the same people as trying to protect, so there should be some nice uh crossover with that, yeah. yeah I can see that yeah, working definitely. quite well. Uh I'm actually I'm quite pleasantly surprised. Like I, I didn't think this was gonna be bad, but I, I went into it with very no expectations of any kind. Yeah, it's better than I thought it was gonna be. Yeah. So I'm 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 pleased. I'm pleased. I'll happily ditch Arrow for this. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> happily. Me too, but I, I I need a reason to drink every week, oh, God. and you know it's it's been quiet this, this past month. I know, I know. Uh, so, so, that's... so what what does it tell you about me? Where the 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 bit of the year with Christmas and New Year's has been the quiet drinking period. That is a bit strange, admittedly. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think just to sort of sum up, uh, I'm liking the the premise. I'm liking the vibes, and more importantly, though, I'm liking him and I'm liking his two daughters, who are kind of the the yeah. most important characters. Uh, so. A moment that proper made me chuckle is um, after he comes in after the the Club One Hundred stuff, uh-huh. and you know he he gets told that 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 his daughter was there, and he's like, "What? Really? What's going on?" <laughs> yeah, no, I kind of like that. Again, I like the way he played it. Uh, yeah. There was a very sort of natural kind of lying that I liked. Um, actually, that reminds me. I liked uh, Will immediately shoots him. You know, when he comes sh- comes up in the suit at the end. Yeah. Will immediately fires a bullet, and the the electrical force field that's created by the suit and his powers, which I, I love yeah. that idea, by the way. Kind of kind of stops it. It's, yeah. It looks. It's got a great visual to it, though. It, it does. It, it's like every time something hits him or he hits something, it's kind of like when you like spark a like a wire, like a metal against yeah. a wire. It's got that it's, kind of. It's effect. why I really like that sequence, even though that the music I think it's playing it too fun. Mm. 
it's a really great sequence of him just kind of going through all the guys and you know you got that that one guy who comes out of the the motel room to see what's going on he's just like nope not yeah. getting involved with that I, I will say I did think at the end when the police were there and he's up on the roof. I thought it was. I thought it was like he looks really obviously just up in that roof. That's not too high. That's not high enough to to not be noticed. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. It, it was getting me as well. Yeah, it was just a little bit silly in that sense. Uh, but yeah, so Will immediately shoots him, and uh, he pulls out the bullet from his force field, and he's like, oh. he's like, hey, at least give me a chance to say something heroic before I beat you. <laughs> like you know, yeah, so let, let me have a chance to get my quippy one liner. I, I want my one liner. I like that. I like that. He's got, he's got a sense of humor. Uh, he does. So no. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm on board. That's... Yeah, it's pretty good. My God, that was impressive. We are geniuses. Absolute geniuses. <laughs> Damn right we are. <laughs> right, so that was bloody... Obviously, we liked it. Uh, it, feels, it's, it feels weird recording this now and not giving any opinions, but there's no point because you just heard 39 minutes of us talking yeah, about it, so exactly. why would we? Uh, you, you know how we feel. So... Probably better than I do right now. <laughs> so that, that's uh, that, that, so that's Black Lane, uh, which will uh, take us on neatly to Supergirl uh, season three episode ten. It is called Legion of Superheroes. Full spoilers, of course, for the episode, as we always do. You, you seem happy about that title, Connor. I, I like the Legion. You know that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And and do you know what else I like? I like Bon Jovi. <laughs> So. Uh, do, you know, do you know what? Do you know what? I wouldn't say I, I don't have enough money for the Legion. I've not I've not read enough of actual Legion of good Legion. The one actual Legion book I tried was the New Fifty Two book, which was absolutely horrendous. Right. No, so that's I, fair. I have no affinity for the Legion, and as much as people typically like say when they pop up in Superman, the one or two times I've seen it, I've not been particularly thrilled about it because. I, I don't like the idea that Superman knows what his legacy is going to be. I've never been fond of that idea. Uh, that's fair. Yeah. But in my defense, my favorite Superman story happens to involve the Legion. That's fair. I've not read that one. Uh, it's on, it's, it's on, a very good story. It's on the to-do list. So it's the good, Legion... You know, spoilers for Comics from the Multiverse, episode 100. <laughs> Matt's getting the Superman story, though. You, you're not allowed to pick that. Uh, no, no. <laughs> you, you, you need to pick so, something else. So, anyway, the, po- so the point I'm making is, is I, I don't have an affinity for the Legion, uh, mostly just down to cir- the circumstance of never encountering any good Legion, and because of that, it kind of left a bad taste in my mouth, and I've kind of avoided it for a while. Uh, I have a feeling that my, my mood will change once they're reintroduced into the Rebirth part of the comics, and maybe the shows are doing more with them, and, I, I, you know, like, the concept, whatever. Right? That said, I really like Brainiac 5 as a character in this. Right, that's the first point. You, yeah. cannot, you, you can debate how he looks, he looks a little bit goofy, but the character is very entertaining and I like him so far. Also, not to get too far ahead in our Smallville reviews, but maybe the best part of Smallville Season 10. Oh, sure. Um, was he not played by James Masters, who was on the he, hit he television was, show? You're right, yes. The hit television um, show. I, 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 I set you up for that, I was waiting for it. <laughs> I, I'm tele- surprised it took I'll finish it this sentence, god damn it. He was on the hit television show, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I really didn't want you to get that out. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was trying, I was trying. So, really, I will, I will, I mean, I would say I'm a huge Bon Jovi fan, but I like the hits. You know, I enjoy, I enjoy the hits of Bon Jovi, so I enjoy the song that was brought up in this episode. But then, most importantly, one thing... I knew the Legion were in this episode. I knew we were getting Brainiac 5. I knew we were getting Brainiac 5. What I did not know, what I was not anticipating, was the rightful introduction to one of the most important characters in Supergirl mythos. Yeah, overhyping it. Streaky the cat. Look... Yes! I don't like cats cats that much. I do like Streaky. (laughs) However, you know where I'm going with this, right? (laughs) He's ginger in the comics. (laughs) He is. He is a ginger cat. And uh, you know where I'm going with this, right? (laughs) Alright, so just in case you don't heard us talk about this before, right? Um, and I want to preface this by saying that we have no problem with this. It's just a funny observation that uh, that we noticed along the way at one point, right? No, no, so, no. You have no problem with this. I'm losing all my <laughs> heroes. <laughs> they all say characters, not heroes. Anyway, so 
So, uh, you know, so they make the Flash and uh, Iris, you know, uh, the cast Candace Patton, who's black, right? So, you know, we have a black Iris West. Yeah, cool, whatever, right, fine, great. No, we, we are fine with that. Right. Uh, and then they cast uh, a black Jimmy Olsen for Supergirl and, well, okay, sure, fine, right? And then, obviously, with Iris being black, Wally ends up being black and it's like, okay, so, and there was this just moment of realisation after all this where we went, hey, they all, they're characters that have all been, you know, recast as black all have something in common. They're all ginger in the comics. Iris is ginger, uh, Jimmy's ginger, Wally's ginger, right? And then to add and, insult and, and to injury... I wonder why I, I <laughs> you know, noticed this. <laughs> for for those listening and not watching, Connor is very much ginger, if I've never oh, mentioned oh, that extremely before. extremely ginger. Right? And then to add to that, uh, last year Spider-Man Homecoming had a little sort of mini twist. So minor spoilers for Spider-Man Homecoming, but you've probably seen it by now if you're into superhero stuff. Uh... But at the end of the movie, we find out that Zendaya is playing their version of MJ, who traditionally <laughs> is Ginger. So it's becoming a bit of a theme here, isn't it? It's an odd, it's an odd trend. For some reason, most of the characters that they're replacing with black actors are originally Ginger. And I'm not going to lie, when I saw that Streaky was a black cat, it did occur to me, and I had a bit of a chuckle. <laughs> I had a bit of a well, chuckle. I'm not going to lie. Here's the thing: I'm all for diversity. I really am. I like that, you know, like Iris especially. I think she's great. Joe is possibly my favorite TV dad right now. But it does hurt my non-existent soul just a touch. Do you know the best thing about I have no ginger representation anymore. Do you know what the best part of all this is? Is the one ginger I can think of on Supergirl was a one one scene joke yeah. where Cat wa- was like, "Oh, he's ginger. Who gives a shit?" <laughs> She's like, "Get rid of him. He's, his, his hair is is distracting me." And then Kara goes out because you don't see who it is. She just said that in season one. She said that in a scene, and then Kara walks out to this guy sitting out there, and he's just bright ginger hair. And she's like, "Hey, uh, Billy, can we speak for a minute?" <laughs> oh, oh, I remember. I don't, I don't forget something that insulting. Oh, this is the best. I love it. Um, uh, of course, I have both a ginger cat and a black cat, as well as a grey and white cat. So I I, I, um, I was I was all for whatever cat they chose, and uh, the, uh, the I was delighted. Do you know what the, you know the good thing was? Is she saw, saw the photograph, and I'm like, oh my god, she had a cat. They're, going to, they're, they're putting streak in continuity. Uh, and then she names it. Right? And she names it, and I'm like, this is amazing. And then she looks up, because cause this is all taking place inside her head, of course. And the cat's there. This is this is like I'm a little upset. There's been not been a lot of donuts, but you know what? I'll take some cats. <laughs> I'll take cats instead if that's the uh, option. I'm a little upset that there's no ginger representation, but more importantly, than that I'm somewhat allergic to cats, so <laughs> I kind of have a hatred of cats inbuilt. So it doesn't really matter what color it is. I just don't like it. <laughs> the delightful cats. Cats are fantastic. Cats uh, are evil. Cats hate me. Supergirl was petting a cat. The cat was purring, and if they put it in the sound mix, you could hear the purring happening. Oh, it yeah. was, it was maybe the most adorable scene that this show has ever had. I loved really? it. I was more adorable than Benoist eating donuts. There's a difference between adorable and sexy. Okay, there's a difference. <laughs> I love the fact <laughs> that you consider that sexy. <laughs> that that just cracks me up. <laughs> or it was a joke, but yeah, sure. No, but the fact that you probably do, you say it's a joke. Nah, you're e- covering. E- e- eating most things is not sexy. Even things I really like is not a sexy thing. I love to eat, but there's nothing sexy about watching someone stuff like fatty foods in their face. Not fatty foods, no. No. <laughs> right. You get away with maybe like strawberry with a bit of chocolate dip, like that. You know, chocolate sauce and a strawberry. That's maybe a sexy maybe, food. Maybe whipped cream. Maybe, maybe a bit of whipped cream, but shoving a donut in your face, I don't care who you are, is not sexy. <laughs> it's not, no. <laughs> and it's I thought I thought that was an obvious joke, but you went down the rabbit hole of actually... Oh, I'm, brand- just, I'm just saying, you're Scottish, you like fried foods by your nature, even though I know you personally don't. Yeah, I don't, yeah, that's just true. I, I know that, but you're Scottish, so I'm making the joke, okay? Just go with it. Oh, that's going to be a long episode. Uh, so, somehow we've spent nine minutes talking about Supergirl, and all we've talked about is ginger diversity and the cat with Look, some food porn. It's, it's really important topics, Jimmy. <laughs> uh, 
For the record, he's not actually that bald. That there's oh, no I'm ginger, really ginger representation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just I funny. just like to play up the joke of it. Yeah. It's funny, actually. I never really care about Scottish representation, as silly as that sounds. But I have to actually admit, I'm noticing a lot more Scottish characters and things, you know, here or there throughout it's things. Tits. In S.H.I.E.L.D., obviously. What else is there? Eh, just a few things. I mean, Lost had Desmond. Um, we've had multiple Scottish characters in S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, well, yeah. Um, I don't know, there's been a few. I feel like I just notice it more now. That's fair. There's a lot more Scottish than there is Ginger. Do you know what the thing is? Natural order of things. No, no. Here's the thing. Uh. Until Scottish people speak, you can't tell the difference. <laughs> with Gingers, it's immediately obvious that they're out of place. You basically, you basically just compare Scottish people to, to uh, Mystique, where they can pretend to be normal until, until they open their mouth. <laughs> Unintentionally, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, that's a, that's a weird episode. Um, so, uh, <laughs> okay, where to begin? So this episode takes place. Uh, well, not all of it, but all the all the Supergirl stuff until the end takes place in her head. And Brainiac Five using technology, they've woke, w- woken him up. Um, and I, I love him. I, I think his personality is uh, is great. I do as well, and I know people weren't big on the look on the posters, and I agree the you know the the, the preview images that they put out they always look really photoshopped to hell and look awful. I don't think there was a poster of him, to be fair. I, I think it was just it was just him in the previews. It was just like screenshots oh, from the okay. preview. Yeah. I, th- I, I feel like they always look better in motion. Mm. These things, and I thought he looked fine personally, and personality dead on. But yeah, personality was good. I think his hair just looks a little bit goofy. Like I feel like the hair could be toned down a little bit just to. Yeah, that's, that's fair. Um, but his personality, his mannerisms, the way he kind of pauses, his speaking, and all that stuff is really good. Uh, so much chemistry with uh, with Kara with Benoist. Like the the, the chemistry was oozing. Um, admittedly, if she smells out the way she smells out anyone, like like you'd, you'd think there'd be chemistry. But then you have Monel. Admittedly, yeah, there are exceptions to this rule. But at the end of the episode, when she's out and they've had their fight with Rain, and we'll talk about all that, when when he comes up and she's like, "Hey, you look, are you shorter or what?" And he's mm-hmm. like, "Oh, are you suggesting that uh, in your head, I artificially made myself taller to create a better first impression of myself?" To black, and he goes on for like, he overly explains it, and she's like, "Yeah, it's like." Yes, that's exactly what I did. And the way she smiles back at him, I'm like, oh my god, get married right now. Just, no, no. <laughs> just, just do that. That smile makes your heart melt, doesn't it? So if it wasn't clear, I liked this episode a hell of a lot. Like, Me too. Like Very good episode. A lot, a lot. Like, I loved this episode, basically. Uh, this this might be the best episode of the season. It, it very well might be. And I think a couple of nitpicks early on, perhaps. There's maybe some rain. I mean, the mask is still stupid. But I think, I think rain's overall, what she's doing is interesting. In terms I think of... my my biggest problem with the episode is the yeah. scene with Rain, you know, where she's with, you know, when she's not Rain, she's with her daughter. Oh, and they treat it like a serial killer scene where she's stalking the daughter and it turns out to be a water gun fight. <laughs> yeah, and then it just shifts to, oh, she's Rain again. Yeah. That was really jarring. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's fair. Uh, but Brain Act 5 is great. Everything with her, uh, him and Kara in her head. Uh, the, the, the heat vision moment where she tries to break out of her head. Oh my god, I forgot how good Benoist is when she's doing, you know, angry and scared. Slow motion as well. Uh, everything's like flying around. And then of course it's accented beautifully with the the, the mug snapping with, with uh and he's just sort of looking at it like, huh. Just M- music is up to scratch. Yeah. Uh great moment. Uh the stuff like, like I say, the the cat thing was great. Especially I mean obviously it's not a super cat, but this idea that the cat was stray and it kinda she related to the cat because she was a stray as well and it was, it was, it was a sweet story. And then obviously the, the whole message was that she realised that because before she was like, Oh, I'm not Kara, I just have to be Supergirl and no, I have to be both. Like Kara's a, an important part and not being Kara leads to this. <laughs> leads to be trapped in your head. Yeah, basically, to, to, to put it that uh, simple way, it, it leads to getting beat by rain. Basically, is the point. Yeah, um, and so it's a really nice message, and she eventually—it's actually after she puts on the glasses, which is you know if it, symbolically for us is that's when she's Kara and not Supergirl, and yeah. she gets this immediately. She gets the key and she she goes out. But there's some fun stuff where like Brainiac's in there while he's also outside uh, for helping yeah. people fight. It, it's fun when he's fighting and you know he can't quite 
cut the difference between them. Yeah, and he's like saying things in front of her, and she's like, like, sorry, I, I'm, my main's focused on uh, the the impending doom. He's like, no, you should focus yeah, yeah, on the yeah, impending yeah. doom. Like, that, this distracts oh. me from the life or death fight. Yeah, so, no, you, you know, maybe you should focus on that. <laughs> yeah, focus on that part. I'll be fine figuring things out in here yeah. while you're doing that. That's, that's okay. Uh, so that that was cool. Um, now, obviously, the Legion outfits look stupid, and this is actually leads to the, the little bit of news that I have for you. Oh, you have news? Uh, CW, this wasn't a Supergirl promo, this was like a... Do you know one of those things where they film just for a promo? And it's like, it wasn't even just the DC shows, it was like, you know, people from like Riverdale and all their other dynasty and all the rest of it. Uh, it was all them basically making these grand entrances into this place. Okay, because I did watch their, you know, their promo for the DC shows. That wasn't the, the Fight Club one, in the, the, I think it was the Locker Room one. Yeah, but it was like a sequel to the Fight Club ones. It yeah. was that sort of style. That This was just a sort of CW line-wide... Uh, everything they've got. Uh, you okay. see, you know, Live for My Zombie was there, like, you know, everyone. Uh, I definitely didn't watch this. And you see him on L at one point. He's wearing the red suit from the comics with a cape. Uh oh. How does it look? Be honest it, with me. It looked, it, it looked like a red version of Superman's suit. Same sort of fabric. Oh, okay, that's not awful. It looked fine, honestly. It looks better than this X Men 2000 crap that yeah, yeah, I, this I one. haven't seen this so yeah. no context but what you're saying sounds fine at worst it's not amazing but it looks fine he's still got the beard interestingly they're keeping the beard which uh, sure whatever <laughs> no I'm down for that Super- more superheroes should have beards um, so yeah so all throughout the episode they're like oh yeah we can't get involved because if any of us get hurt and then they reveal that uh, the blight were like destroying planets in the future so we we came back in time with that in our dna to help fight them so none of us can die because we have to like survive and go back yeah to we have sleep. to be at this place at this time sort of thing yeah so they keep saying no and like you know certain girls like hey like i know we're not supposed to but we should probably help like cause supergirl's still knocked out and you know rains like murdering people meth clinics and you know at the end obviously the big children's at the prison she's going to murder all the prisoners uh the the religious cult guy who <laughs> worships kryptonian uh religion he's a follower of Rao. follower of Rao. uh but evil row not what well, i don't think i'd say he's a evil row he's just taken the idea of Rao and twisted it in oh a sure way. yeah like well my point being is he's not following this with Kara and what regular kryptonians believe it's what rain and her people are all yeah you know the extremist side and very quickly he's like i'll i, I will serve you rain and she seems to take that on board so that's fine uh so this is all going on um and it's fine i actually think her acting as rain's actually fine it's just the mask still looks goofy as shit oh it's, i hate it the mask is awful. Do you know what is, is my problem with Rain? Mm-hmm. Is that I feel like the dichotomy between her as Rain and her as, you know, herself just feels so wrong. Wonderfully. I don't know. And maybe they'll <laughs> capitalise on that later in the season, but right now mm. it just isn't working for me. You know she's going to have this inner fight to. Yeah, yeah, I know. To, to, to do this, you know, it's, yeah. going to, it's going to be a thing. Uh, so. So what makes this good is you've got all this stuff with Supergirl, which is really good. Brainiac Five is great. You've oh, got yeah. you've got at the prison when when the Legion finally say, you know what, we're going to step in and try and fight this, right? Their entrance because obviously earlier on they're mentioning that they don't really have much knowledge of history. Uh, Monel actually taught them about a lot of stuff, uh, and it's like oh Aristotle and this and that, and then after all these like classical figures, you know, artists, this is what, musicians. This is where they speak to my heart. And then she's like, and Bon Jovi. And I'm like, what the hell, really? And then later on, when she's trying to talk him into it, she quotes a Bon Jovi song. She, she drops lyrics. Well, not going to lie, this is the most I've ever liked Monel. Monel, as a Bon Jovi fan, is better than any Monel we've had yet. I think it made me like her more than him because she was dropping the, she was the one dropping the lyrics. It's true, but right. he was the one who inspired her. True, so I'm true, like, true. okay, I respect you more. I'm not going to lie. Their entrance, when Rain's talking to cult guy where the song starts playing and they're blasting it out of the spaceship look i love it uh, as all of the audience have just heard we really liked black lightning oh we did we yeah. really loved did it. loved it but this is the moment of the week for me as, oh, yeah. you know as a moment yeah we'll pick a ship f- coming up blasting bon jovi hell yeah yeah we'll pick our favorite episode at the end like we always do but yeah this was a feel-good moment. It was funny. It was well set up. It was seeded, so it felt like payoff. 
Um, and it was do you, like, you know, do you know, my only disappointment uh-huh. is that the fight scene that follow, you know, the inevitable yeah. fight scene that's coming up isn't set to Bon Jovi. Yeah, yeah, they, they, they fade it out before the fight starts. Uh, some interesting beats throughout this. I really. Um, just to go back a little bit, when they first try and capture Rain and they've got some kryptonite and they've got their their red sun grenades. I really like that idea, by the way, red <laughs> sun grenades. Oh, yeah, it's cheesy as shit. But it's great. Uh, and I actually, there's a moment where like Alex is hurt and Rain's going for it, and I love Jean coming in and just like throwing like a heavy punch. Like he's not holding back. I love every time Jean shows up. In this episode, because you know yeah. you have that moment there, and you have the moment when the Bon Jovi's playing, and then he just shows up from underground. He just phases yeah. up. Yeah, no, Jean. So good. There's some nitpicks to have. We'll get to those in a minute. But Jean defending Alex because he cares about her like a father. Fantastic. Uh, the him and helping in the fight. Uh, Rain using super breath, freeze breath uh, on Monel, but Saturn Girl putting a force field up so it just makes a, a frozen bubble. I love it. Beautiful. Look, look. Beautiful. You, you like you say you can nitpick, but seeing them use powers in you know synchronicity in that way is just great. It really it's good. is. Uh, up in the game, and then the ship looks cool. So they've got all that going on at the same time, and of course, Supergirl eventually shows up and kind of like injects her with the kryptonite because like, that's the plan is to inject her with raw crypt, you know, kryptonite juice yeah. into her into her veins, uh, which works a bit better for a while, um, and that that beats a temper. I, I mean, nitpicks. They seem to just all rest a bit too easy, like like she not might not just show back up like really soon. That was a, you know TV one hundred and one, but a bit weird. Uh, yeah. Secondly, and, and Rain's whole resisting the kryptonite. Yeah, like you know, what's the deal with that? I mean, we know she's been modified, so that maybe has something to do with that. It just seems like ah, uh, just cause. Yeah. Uh, the, the other that picks I think you can have is so earlier on they even name drop Clark at one point, right? They actually name drop Clark when they're talking about Kryptonite not being around because, you know, Clark wanted it removed and they, they mentioned this. Fine. A couple of seasons later, it's like, oh, we should inject Kryptonite directly into her neck. And then Wynn goes, yeah, but who do we know who's strong enough that could do that? And it comes to Supergirl lying on the table and all I could think was, look, I get that we accept that they don't call Clark for a lot of things. I feel like evil Kryptonian terrorizing the city supergirl's out of commission this is that's, the time that's the time where you can do it yeah that's the time when you call clark they just and i get we have to accept this and i get i mean give us a lane or he's off planet doing something or whatever they've done that last season right yeah they've done it once but once or twice before but it just this was the time like no it just it makes too much sense that this is when you would call him yeah, it does so i mean again nitpicky whatever it, it's it's less annoying if they don't mention him in the episode <laughs> But when they do, it's like, no, yeah. no, we're so aware of Clark, but we're not going to meddle. Yeah. Uh, so on top of all this, on top of everything we've been praising, the action at the end, Supergirl's journey, Brainiac 5 is really good, his chemistry with Kara is great. We have hilarity as well. Because I think when when you get the, 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 the Lena and James stuff at the start, and it's it's fine, it's going on, and it's like, oh, she's like, oh, we should tell Kara, because you guys kind of dated. It's like, yeah, we kind of forgot that. But yeah, sure, sure, <laughs> sure, they dated yeah, for like we, a week. Yeah, we pretended that didn't happen. And James is just acting awkward because he knows Kara's in a coma. <laughs> but she's, she's like, oh, he's feeling awkward because they have history. And yeah. eventually he lies that she's sick. And I'm like, well, this is easy. Just get Jean to go and pretend to be her. And sure enough, like two scenes later, Wynn gets the phone call and he's like, hey, uh, Jean, uh, you know, maybe we have to pretend to land it. And he's like, oh, not again. <laughs> he's like, he's not happy. Yeah. Uh, and I love I the I love be- hearing his voice yeah. come out of Kara's mouth. That is fantastic. It looked really, it looked, or sounded, depending on how you look at it. But, you know, it, you know, the overall look and sound was good when it happened. It was yeah, a nice. It was. Uh, you know, uh, they, they synced it up perfectly. They synced it up, but it was some, a nice, some solid ADR work. It was a clash. It was a nice clash of the two things yeah. to make it feel weird, which was great. And she's, you know, he's all awkward and uh, like, and Lena comes I in. I love the way he calls Jimmy Olsen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's that. There's uh, like calling her, like calling Lena boss, referring to James, and of course Lena comes in and immediately starts talking about James, and he's like, oh, we kiss, he's like. Oh we, oh, we did. And she says something like, and he's a really good kisser, but you, you know that. It's like, yes. The, the moment for me is when he, he can't figure out how to lean. Yeah, yeah. He's leaning forward as Kara, and then he's like, no, I'm going to sit up straight a bit. Oh, because if, yeah, at first he, he kind of like leans like a guy where the legs are wide open, and he's yeah. just he's kind of leaning on a, on a knee, and it's a, it's a very guy stance. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and he's like, yeah, this isn't right. I'm going to correct that. 
Do you know what? I feel like Benoist must have so much fun with these scenes. Oh, absolutely. She, she, it's like, you know, be a guy, and she's like, oh, well, <laughs> brace yourselves a, for this impression. It's an excuse to let loose, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and all of it was funny. And as, as funny as the scene itself was, I, I actually almost like the, uh, when he, when John gets back, and he's, he's fine, he's just, you know, he's himself again, and he's just like, right, we're going to fight Rain, but you know what? I compared to listening to J- James Olsen's kissing abilities, this is that'll be easy. Yeah, this is easy. Like that that line might have even been funnier. Uh, yeah. Jean being annoyed about that is is great. I lo- I love it. They don't do it often enough. <laughs> I really don't. I love that he's so annoyed because oh that this again. Yeah. Because you know, we, we obviously we know he's done it before, but we've never really got it from his perspective before. No. And I, I like that he, he is the first one who says, I'm going in to fight her, like to reign. And then he doesn't show up with the Legion, but of course it's just like a more of a duping tactic because he pops yeah. up later. I mean, I think it's fair to point out that in the comics, he, he is stronger than this. And in, in the comics, Martian Manhunter is at least equal strength to a Kryptonian. Yes, it is. But to be fair, they've never shown that on this show. No, that's true. So can... this is at least consistent with the way he's been portrayed here. That, that, that's true that's true but I just it's worth mentioning no, I, uh, I agree even if they handle it better in this episode because they actually have him make the choice to go because there's, there's been so many times when he stays back in the command centre and it's like you know John you're kind of useful in these situations on the field maybe, yeah, <laughs> maybe go yeah, out definitely. Uh, but it's it's, it's cool it's uh, I had a blast this, I, I and I saw people be kind of lukewarm in this online and I'm like I don't know what you guys want like I feel like if you're if you've been a fan of this show, you know of the good qualities of this show up until now. I feel like this this episode was like all the things and again new things. Like we have a potential love interest in Brainiac Five who I like and has chemistry with her. This is the thing. Barring Arrow, this was the last thing I watched because I'd heard those lukewarm things. Mm. And then I watched it. And I'm like, what the hell are you guys on about? This was great. Yeah, uh, by the end of the episode, of course, Lena and James are kissing again, so they're they're happy together. Cool, yeah, yeah. that stuff's out. Um, and yeah, it's, it's fine. And obviously, uh, Kara's like, oh yeah, the Monel thing still hurts, but like, you know, I'm getting yeah, over whatever, it. I'm getting over. Yeah, it. Ba- basically, we've we've had an excuse now to stop having the scenes feel awkward. So good, we can move on with yep, lives. Pretty much. Uh, that's good. That's good. Uh, ho- hopefully, certain girl uh, gets some development at some point. Because I mean, I liked her a little bit in this episode, but it's just I, I don't really dislike her in any way. She's just kind of not really had much to do no, beyond. She's just kind of there, but at least this time yeah. she got to use her powers and do something. Yeah. So and... there's development in that sense. And that means on... she only showed up like two episodes ago, right? Oh yeah, sure. And also the fact that she's the one trying to convince Monel to let's just go in the fight makes you like her a little bit because as the audience, we're like, yeah, just get in the because we know you're going to do it by the end of the episode. Just do it. <laughs> Definitely. So, I'm curious as to how they end up with their their better suits. Because if he's getting his red suit, I have to imagine that Saturn Girl's going to get her suit as well. Oh, please. <laughs> I have to I, imagine. I, I, I know, but I, I really like the Legion. And this is, it's fine. I like seeing, I mean, just seeing the characters is amazing. The fact that they're there in live action is fantastic. Mm. But please give them the suits. Uh, I wonder if Win will design them. Like they don't, they don't have these suits already. Like, but Win's like, hey, mm, yes, I'm down. Hey, I, 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 this black leather shit's not working. Let's let's do something else. I'm <laughs> and down. He, and he, he breaks out some. Uh, I would even surprise me if he actually pulls out one of Superman's like suits that he's left behind because it was like slightly damaged. He fixes it up uh, and, paint, and paints it red. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I, I think the cape was a very similar cape shoulder thing. Okay, uh, cool. Which I think works better for Monel than it does Superman. I've not seen it. Most of it's I'll judge when we, when we get it. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I just need it. Uh, I really like this episode. Like, I like. Yeah, you you can nitpick things, sure. Um, but for the most part, I was into. It. I was having fun. I like multiple because even when there's a really good episode of Supergirl, typically maybe a subplot will still be kind of shitty, and I'll I'll just really like the main plot or vice versa. I feel like I liked everything in this episode, plot wise. Oh, I did too. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, so because even the the Luna and Jimmy led to the the, the Jean and Kara stuff, which yep. was gold. So no, uh, I I we should mention the ending, of course, which is a uh, Rain apparently has allies on Earth. Yeah, uh, the Kryptonian Ghost Lady uh, said so. <laughs> no, that's cool. Uh, the next episode is called Fort Ross, so I've got a feeling that that's where the allies are going to be. Makes sense. Uh, but that was in space, right? Supergirl pushed that into space at the end of season one, if I if I do recall correctly. 
I don't recall, but I'll tell you what now. <laughs> so that she was may, a long time ago. So they may be going to space to retrieve Fort Ross, uh, potentially. I don't know even though that is it orbiting the moon or something, I don't know. <laughs> I'm cool either way. Whatever it whatever it is. Yeah. That's that's cool. Uh so that's super cool. Uh no, I I I I'd go as far as I love this episode, so super cool. All right, well, I guess we'll move on to the Flash. Uh, and for the record, this might be the start of part two of this on the audio because the audio has size limits, and we've already went quite long. That I think we may have to split this in two for the audio feed. I'm not gonna lie, this would probably be better information at the end of part one. <laughs> I'll record a little bit to tack on if it needs it. I'm down. Easy, easy, easy solution. Oh, yep, yep, that's fine. So this is uh, The Flash, season 4, episode 10. It is called The Trial of the Flash. And... I, I have a question mm-hmm. already. Why didn't they call it The Trial of Barry Allen, given that that's a, you know, a story arc. an actual yeah. thing? And it's not The Flash that's on trial here, it's Barry Allen who's on trial. Yeah, I I just assumed it was called The Trial of Barry Allen. Mm-hmm. But, no. Oh, okay, they, uh, they, they done goofed. So we end we ended the uh, the mid season finale before Christmas with him being arrested for the murder of uh, Devoe. Devoe, thank you. I was I was I was, I, I was saying thinker in my head. Thinker, I, I what's his name? I see you struggling, what? and I was like, I know this one. Yeah, Devoe. Uh, so so that's the thing, and of course we still have Devoe, but we just have him in a different body now. He's he's in a was it Look, uh, Dominic? Uh, I think Dominic. Yeah, that sounds right. Here's the thing. I remember on the last episode, I said he sounded a lot like the guy who plays Jimmy on on Supergirl. Mm-hmm. Did you hear it this time? Now that I mentioned it, or was it, or had you forgotten? I forgot you said it. Okay, next next week. I actually thought he was doing a pretty good job of emulating how original Devoe spoke. I was kind of his mannerisms, yeah. yeah but um, his actual his voice sounds so much like the guy who plays Jimmy. Well, or I mean, you can't James. change that. I mean, no, no, he can't. <laughs> yeah. but you'll notice it. And it had been too long, so he'd forgotten. But you'll notice it next week. Uh, but uh, so I, I'll, I'll praise that first of all. I think he. I think we were worried. I, I don't know if I like him as much as the original Devo yet, but so far I don't think he's bad. He's definitely not as good, but he's not bad. Uh, the scene with Barry in the, the little courtroom at, towards the mm. end was a uh, pretty good. Uh, the episode as a whole yeah. was 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 a bit in the mix side. Uh, yeah. I'm no expert on the law, okay? Oh, oh, I can tell. So that might mean. You're Scottish. Piss off. <laughs> I'm no expert on the law, but I feel like even I'm noticing some problems with the the uh, sequence of events that takes place in this episode. Just a couple. I mean, first off, this has skipped the Christmas break as well, so it's like six weeks ahead of where we were. Even that still feels too quick for this to be already be a trial, it, right? It does, it does, yeah. Because yeah. these are lot usually like a good year. Um, especially since it didn't really feel like that much time had passed, even though it, we know it has. They, they told us it had because they were like, <laughs> oh, yeah, he's under house arrest. Yeah, I'm, I'm, Cisco's hacking the thing to say he's yeah, wherever. It, but They skipped a lot ahead. And the court yeah. case itself, full of things that didn't make sense. There was Because th- Cecile, even though she's usually the, the district attorney, she's taking a break from that to defend Barry Allen. Uh, sure. Are, are you allowed to do that? <sighs> Honestly, if I mean, you're not, that is the least of our problems. Let's just move on. <laughs> right. Fine. I'll allow it. It's yeah, You're right. It's it's not a big deal. Uh, right. So she, she, she actively has like opportunities to pursue things at various points and doesn't take them. I'm not... I don't think I'd make a good lawyer, but I was noticing things that she could do. Like, so, one of the things that, uh, like, Joe and and, uh, Ralph go and do throughout the episode is, like, Ralph's not... He's determined not to let another Alan go to prison. (laughs) Like, he's already done it once. He's not doing it again. So he gets Ralph and his CD detective skills to get some photos of, uh, I think his wife. What was her name? It's been, been, been since, uh before Christmas. It's a good question. I couldn't uh, tell you. For some reason, I want to say Claire, but I don't think that's right. No, nah, it's Marlies. I don't think I ever knew that, to be honest. I don't know why I thought Claire. Yeah. Uh, again, a- I'm still drunk. AKA the mechanic. That's our... Again, we've not really called her that before either. Oh, whoa, I couldn't tell. I, I don't remember that. I guess we were just calling her the wife before Christmas, but that feels a bit weird to call that now. She's such a prominent character. I think she only showed up like twice before Christmas, though. You're Maybe misremembering. She was in like every episode. I think we only spoke about it like twice. 
<laughs> she was there. We didn't really speak about her much. Um, maybe moving the goalposts a bit, but maybe. <laughs> but she was there every episode, so I'm not. I'm not going to entertain that sentence with that. With the. Uh... You're you're right. She was there a lot. I just don't remember speaking about her much. So, but so fine. So 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 fine. Uh, and so they get a picture of her kissing. Uh, Devoe, but in the new body, so that you know they can sort of present it as an affair, so they can maybe get the jury against her, blah 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 blah, right? And you know she has this heartbreak, and she's like crying. She's talking about, oh Barry wouldn't leave my husband alone, we felt unsafe, blah 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 blah. Yeah. And then she still comes up with this photo, and she's like, who is this? You were kissing him this morning, yeah, dirty slut. Like, that was basically what she says to her. You know, paraphrasing, but yeah, that was basically. And it. she goes, oh well, my husband was in a wheelchair. He knew he couldn't please me. He let another guy do it. No, but here's a, here's a specific thing she said though that. I'm calling so much bullshit on. She said, oh, we met him for the first time at this ALS thing, uh, like, three years ago, whatever it was. And I'm like, there'll be an attendance record for that thing. She can look into this. She can see if he was actually there. They could pause... Now, maybe, admittedly, DeVoe may have covered his tracks and made sure he was at this thing. To be fair, in, in its defence, would there be an attendance thing for the people necessarily? And if there was... Would it be for the people who were there just, you know, as support with them? Or would it be just, you know, the, the people who are suffering? Okay, but then you, then you look into, okay, who is there for? Who is he helping there? You know, know. Like, there's a paper trail. There's, there's something to look into. And admittedly, it could lead to a dead end. I, um, I acknowledge it could lead to a dead end. But Cecile doesn't even think about it. She just moves on and says, oh, well, that's it, Barry. You have to make you the flash. Nothing else I can she, do. She literally went, well, that went badly. <laughs> That, that is it and then yeah. her, her entire closing statement when it's quite clear they've done nothing to help Barry out is basically like, Barry Allen's a good man he's not a killer remember that when you're you know voting uh, I'll go yeah, sit down yeah. <laughs> that was basically her closing statement <laughs> how, how is she the DA? well because she's used to punishing them and putting them away she's not good at defending but even so she's a pretty shit lawyer <laughs> Maybe, maybe she's good. Well, that's the thing, though. The, the, the police do a lot of her work for her when she's the yeah, prosecutor. Okay. So she's good when there's evidence. Does not make her a good lawyer. It means <laughs> okay, she can sure. read. Uh, look, I'm not blaming her. I am blaming some shoddy writing on this. Oh, not, uh, me too. Yeah, I, I am not blaming the character of Cecile one I I am blaming the writers of this episode for being morons. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and. Here's the thing, so so they have Captain Singh up at one point, and he's like saying, oh, Barry's, you know, he's been a great employee, he's always good at his case, he believes, and, you know, I hired him because he wanted to help the victims rather than catch the bad guy, and then interview was like, oh, this nice little speech. And then the prosecutor immediately was like, he's been late like 172 times or something like that. I think it was just 72 Whatever, in the but, last, like, three years. But it was it was a lot, it was a lot of late, lateness. It, it was, yeah. I'll be honest, the amount of times we've seen him be late, I'm not sure if this number's believable, I think it's more. I think it's more as well, yeah. Right, so he he says all this, and he's like, also, you know, have you covered for him? He's like, no, of course not. So, uh, like, you know, what was he doing with all this time? Could he conceivably have a double life? And he goes quiet, and that's the end of the scene. And I'm like, look, this doesn't prove that he killed someone. (laughs) No, no, this is the thing. They go, oh, he just took a month off. And I'm like, where was he? And Sin goes, he took some personal time. And I'm going, what's wrong with that? People take vacation. Yeah. They're allowed to do that. Admittedly, without telling your boss, and for three months, it's a bit... All right, it's a bit much, but... It's a bit hefty, yeah. He, he's clearly saved up the time for them to go, yeah, fine, it's whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, obviously, we know he always gets the job done because he's got super speed, and, you know, it's things like, oh, but he always, no matter when he shows up, he always gets it done. Then he's right, he probably does and, always get and it done. And that's the thing, why should he care? I mean, I mean, okay, it's unprofessional to be late, don't get me wrong. Mm. But things like, hey, he does his job, I don't give a shit. Yeah, he shows up and does it in like two minutes and then says, here's the results, and he's like, okay. <laughs> why, why, why do I give a shit if he's late, if he gets it done? Uh, but it presents um, it as this somber moment where Singh might even be considering that, oh, maybe he has a double life, maybe he has been a killer, like when we're not. And it's like, and it's like, oh, come on now. So this whole thing, and so Cecile just basically gives up and is like, oh, you have to tell me the Flash, that's the only way you win this. Get the sympathy, mm-hmm. get the sympathy, tell yep. me the Flash. And Iris is kind of on board, and... I will give the scene that I did like after they do the whole thing with uh, uh, with uh, Marlies and she st- she leaves crying. I love that Iris storms out after like that bitch was putting on an act and she goes out after. It's like you can stop crying. There's no one watching. Why are you do like I liked her. Oh, that was a good scene. Yeah, yeah, I liked her confrontation there. 
And I also liked her saying, you know what, Barry, you're being an idiot. I'm just going to tell him you're the Flash. And she comes in. And then we get Because Speed Force Bro. Because Barry, not only can he now like have Iris in the time sort of like vortex with him. Uh, even before we get to that, okay. I think this might have been the most awkward ad break cut I've ever seen on this show. Because, you know, she's in mid-sentence. She oh, goes, she's oh like, Barry Allen is the... And that, that's it. Cuts to ad break. I'm like, okay, that was really jarring. And uh-huh. then it comes back. Barry Allen is the... And then he, he zooms in, obviously. But yeah. it just felt so awkward so as zoom, a cut. He zooms in, and then he's moving so fast that like everyone else is standing still in the room. Although it goes on so long, I have to question how fast he's actually moving at this point. If they're, if they're this still for that long, this is, like, beyond light speed. Yeah, yeah it is. Like... I mean, I know we can do beyond, but I'm saying it's beyond beyond light speed. Like, is, anyway, so I mean, maybe I'm wrong. It's, a physicist can I mean, I mean, light speed is what three times ten to the eight meters per second. Three times eight to the ten. Oh, sure. Around. It's very fast. But <laughs> how do you know that? You... <laughs> I, I did physics, bitch. Okay, I don't know that. It's eight it's minutes. Definitely three times one of them. Eight minutes to the sun, right? That's 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 light that's, speed. That's, that is correct. Yes. Yeah, I know I'll, that much. I'll, yeah, you're right on that one. There you go. So anyway, the point being, but she's actually with him and talking to him in this, and she even yes. says, "How are you doing this?" And he literally goes, "I don't know." But anyway, and he starts talking to, him. <laughs> like, how did how did he even get up to stop her if he didn't know he could do this? What was his plan? Speed force, bro. <laughs> Are you going to speed out the room? <laughs> like I don't know. Which you, you then have to explain. And but I mean, don't get me wrong. I, like I like the 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 cheesy emotion of the scene. However, I have some other problems with it. I have the problem of his logic. The logic of Barry Allen from the the mid season finale and in this episode is mind numbing to me. Right. I think I got it in the mid season. Of okay, I'm going to face this. You know. I still poked holes in it though, because he could have. We poked holes. Because it's it, not his crime. Because it's not, it wasn't his crime. He shouldn't have felt responsible to take on. No, the, no, no, that I heat. agree. But I can, I can accept it to a degree. Of all right, I'll face the trial. Oh, I'll oh, go through the trial. I'll oh, be fine. To be fair, I, I mean, not, not that they would know this or he would think this, but I will at least say from the, the writer's perspective, I get that the idea would be that the would have a contingency in place if he did use his speed to cover up the body. Because you know, as we've seen, he, he has all these percentages outcomes, yeah, and yeah, you know, yeah, he's, yeah, he's got things so. mapped out, but. Right, so he's doing this whole thing, and he's like, "Oh no, I can't run from this. I have to go through the system, and I, I can't use my speed." And I'm like, "You, you're literally letting yourself be convicted for a crime you did not commit." On top of that, so the whole thing when he's getting like, uh, like the final statements are happening, right? Where there's this villain of set up through the episode, and we'll get to sort of that as a separate plot. But he like basically says, "Hey, I need to go," and Cecile's like, "You know, technically, there's no law that he has to be here for this bit," <laughs> and he's like. Okay, but you know clearly we're going to see you guilty now because you look suspicious as shit. Uh, but the whole thing is, is he he leaves. He makes himself look bad. He knows he's making himself look bad to go save the city. Here's the thing: once he's in jail, he can't save the city no more. Well, I mean, sure, he can phase yeah. out. No, that's, the that, that's the thing that bothers me. Cisco even says earlier, "It's like, ah, eh, well, there's no jail that can hold you anyway. Yeah. You can just get out." And he's like, "No, no, if I do this, I'm going to jail properly." I'm like. Does but, he does he realise that this is literally the last time he can ever save the city if he goes to prison and he decides not to leave the jail cell? That, that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, yeah, okay, you're saying, oh, I'm going to do this properly, I'm going to go to jail, but but then you can't be the Flash. And then, <clears throat> sure, you know, he goes, oh, I'm not going to p- commit perjury because that makes me what I think that 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 makes me what they think I am. I'm like, it does, but if you don't commit perjury, you go to jail and then the Flash ceases existing. Look, and we know Wally's going, look, so... You know what? I'm just going to... This, this, maybe this is a radical thought, right? Maybe this is a radical notion. In this context, I think perjury is okay. I said it. I just I said it. Do you know what? Me too. <laughs> In this context, when we know he's not guilty, he knows he's a superhero who saves lives on a daily basis, and he's not going to be able to do that anymore, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's worth it. It's... It, it's worth it, all right. It just it is. is, all right. It's fine. But of course, he goes to and do you know what? I'm really annoyed. They actually mentioned. Uh, oh no, I did. I, I like Joe bringing up his father, right? Because I, I got why he wanted to stop him from going to prison. That made a lot of sense to me. I hate that Barry referenced that his dad went through this too, because it really sullied the moment at the end where he got into the cell and there was the 
Henry I Arms here. I kind of hated that moment because I never took Henry as the guy who would go, I'm going to graffiti on my wall as, oh, Henry Allen was here. That yeah, I know, but they wanted let you let us I, know I that it's it, his but... cell. It, I think I think I smell. I, I agree. It doesn't really fit with Henry. It has been known. I kind of like it. Those a Shawshank reference because it, it made me think of Shawshank. Oh, that's fair. I get that. I just so. didn't buy it from Henry. Do you know what I hate though? Okay. Iris. Iris was always like, no, no, we're the Flash. And then it comes to court. It's like, no, no, no Barry's the Flash. It's not me. Nothing to do with me. He's the Flash. <laughs> That was not the point of her outing him. It wasn't, but <laughs> she takes no responsibility. If anything, no, 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 that's the thing. If anything, this is actually enforcing the idea that we are the Flash because she's making the decision for them as a team as the Flash to admit that he's the Flash. <laughs> Shouldn't it be an equal decision? She, she's, she's a. Uh, Barry's not thinking clearly, and actually, I actually agree that he's not thinking clearly. I'm on Iris' yeah. side here. She should have outed I them. Too. I don't think, uh, but I don't think that it's her decision to make. I think she's making the right choice and going, oh, no, 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 we mm-hmm. should just tell them. But ultimately, it's his identity. He does get to make that choice. Actually, let's rewind a little bit. Can I just okay. say, I, I just, I just, it made me think of something else I was thinking about during all this scene, especially in the, the slow motion speech when he's like telling her why this has to happen. Uh, in fact, another thing about that before I even take me to that point is that I was actually giggling before it ended because I realised that when he went back to his seat, she was still going to be mid-sentence and would have to, on the spot, think of what she was going to say instead. I and, did the same. And I was like, oh God, she's going to have nothing prepared. This is putting her really on the spot here. And she's like, Barry Allen is back to, you know, real time. Uh, it, it, he's really innocent. good man. He's innocent. He's innocent, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, oh God. And I'm like, you know what, Iris, you're a gem for putting up with this bullshit. <laughs> a gem. You look a fool now. A fool. It's all his she fault. Did, she did. She just walks out of the courtroom going, God's sake, what did I just do? Yeah, it's, it's glorious. Uh, but the other thing I was thinking of during this whole time, he's given this speech about how, you know, it's my identity. And if, you know, if, if people know who I am, then everyone we've ever worked with is in danger. You're in danger. It's about safety. So all these things. You're a typical superhero thing, but turned up to 11 where he's really he's really hammering it in where he, this can, mm. they cannot let out his identity. This cannot happen. And all I could think was, Barry... You left off that hood for every son of a bitch that asks. Like, every single time. Oh, we joke about it all the time. How long did it take him to reveal it to Ralph? The, the nose-wiggling bastard that he is? The same episode he was introduced in. <laughs> exactly. It was the same episode. Oh, it, it, yeah. it was maybe 25 minutes later in runtime. That's when it happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, this all started when he revealed his face to Linda in season 2. And ever since then, it feels like, Linda, oh, Cecile, hey, by the way, Ta da! <laughs> he's, he's done it to so many people. It is unreal. So it just it, there's, there's, admittedly, it's more of a writing problem that I that I, this feels really hypocritical to me. It's not really Barry that's been hypocritical. It's because it's consistently been a thing for the last year or so. Yeah, where it feels like he's really frivolous with it, and then all of a sudden he's like, "No, we can't do this." Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I agree. It's a problem. It makes this feel, even though inherent on its own, it's not that bad an episode. But yeah, the core idea is fine. There's some good more. I, I, I like uh, Joe's going to plant evidence and uh, having Ralph went through it. Stops him. Yeah, Ralph's yeah. speech to stop him is really good. I, I like that. And then uh, Ralph turning his finger into key is awesome. That was okay. Of course, the nose, you know, twitching. The nose wiggle. Good. I yeah. love it. It's always good. Yeah. Uh, that's, his, that's his thing. Uh, by the way, the next episode is called uh, "The Rise of the Elongated Knight." So I'm uh, thinking, I'm thinking because Barry's out of commission and because Wally's nowhere to be found, I think he's Ralph he's, he's stepping up. Has to step up, yeah. Uh, uh, yes. I didn't really care that much for the, the fallout plot. It was just kind of there, so Barry had something to go save the day. Do you know what? It took me a second. Then I was like, "What the hell are you on about the Fallout plot?" And then I was like, "Oh, <clears> that guy was called Fallout." Do you know what was funny about that? Is that they started talking about rads, and I just all I could think of it was the Fallout game. <laughs> me too. I'm like, 10,000 rads. I'm sure I can just have some rad away. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, some rad away. So, you know, maybe a stim pack or whatever. <laughs> uh, yeah. And uh, so that, this 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 is good on, and it's, it's just kind of a weird power where everyone gets like radiation poison around them, and they all faint. I love how oblivious this dude is. <laughs> It's not until he's he's glo- it, Joe the Fire is the first time it happens just a little bit. It looked like Clark near Kryptonite on Smallville. It did, yeah. Yeah, but then, then like, everyone started fading. And it's not until he's like bright green, where he's like, oh wait a minute, 
I'm green. What the hell's going on here? I'm, yeah. Oh, oh shit. Yeah, uh, he's, he's, you know, he's he's going nuclear and like, everyone's doing the thing. Uh, but what I did like in this, I liked the uh, Joe might stop him cold, and then like both like Harry and like Cisco look at Caitlin's like, and he's like, well that's fine, guys. But he's like, hey, go on, turn it. He's like, it doesn't just work like that. You have to like, I have to be scared or angry or, or something. So then they just like sort of pick on her for a minute until she turns well, like, it to Frost. Everyone in the city's gonna die. She's pretty, pretty scared of that. <laughs> uh, but it was an amusing scene. I, I enjoyed that scene. Um, I actually, I thought the uh, the melting out the ice part, uh, effect looked kind of cool. I did too. Although I laughed at the idea that they were like, "Oh, hey, cold. That's what we need." And then Killer Frost shows up, and just gets, him out, yeah. and then that's it. She's out of commission. She gets knocked out. No, no, no more of her. To, from to be episode. to be fair, heroes getting knocked out for the duration of fights is a big problem on these shows in general. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, I can't uh, argue that. Poor, poor Wally had it happen to him multiple times with Barry. <laughs> I'm all the time. Uh, uh, I, I love the idea of being able to dump all this radioactive energy somewhere. Uh, Earth 15's a dead Earth. Go there, Cisco. <laughs> I like that Harry knows that. Do you know what my hope is? My hope is that the season 5 uh, main big bad is someone from Earth 15 who's really pissed. Oh, yeah, I'm down for that. You you, you killed, like, half my city or something. <laughs> some, 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 ha- some Harry messed up. He meant Earth-16. Actually, no, no, I looked this up. Earth-15 in the comics is indeed a dead Earth. And do you know who made it dead? I believe, from my, my quick skim of research. Is this from the, the multiversity stuff? Uh, maybe. Okay. Go on. Uh, prime time, baby. <laughs> Superboy oh, Prime. Yeah. Uh, not that I think we're going to get him. It'd be weird to get him when there's no Superman. <laughs> but, uh, One day. One day. But uh, no, uh, that was amusing. Uh, so, yeah. I, I didn't check where that was from, but I just, I, I, I seen Superboy Prime references to making that a dead earth. So that amuses me greatly. Hey, uh, this is probably the closest we're going to get to a Superboy Prime reference. So let's take it. For for a while. That's true, that's true. So so that was, that was, uh, that, that was that plot, uh, basically. And Barry shows up and, you know... Funnels it into Earth-15. Basically. That's the yeah. thing. This is a nice enough moment. It's fine. It's, the yeah, the villain fun. himself is just kind of there, so he has this moment to have... I like that he wasn't evil, and he was just like, oh, shit, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's just panicking. Which I think is just by the nature, they had to make it simple, because it wasn't getting like this much... Because normally the villain and the plot of the week would get a lot more time, because we're doing all the court stuff, but this is the main focus. Yeah, uh, he's, he's just walking around going, oh, hey, I'm killing people. Yeah, let's see. I, I did quite like the Barry uh, DeVos scene, and you know when he's like just gloating, and like he's like, "Oh, that was a thirteen percent." You were going to tell everyone you were the Flash, and he's mm-hmm. like, oh, well, "I'd never do that." And he's like, "Yeah, you know, we, we, you've not beaten us yet. You know that, right?" He's like, "Haven't I?" He was really like, "I enjoyed that, that scene. That, that was oh. a nice little villain uh, thing." Of course, he goes to goes to Iron Heights, and uh, Wolf's there. We set Wolf up earlier, of course, just to give us the the awkwardness of uh, of it happening now. So. Uh, I mean, I didn't hate the episode, but th- there was a lot of things to pull apart and it's complain definitely about. Definitely not one of its best, is it? There's just a lot of things you can sort of. There's a lot of things that don't blend together. Uh, and I like the idea of like the the dual speeches where it cut to like Sign giving like the Flash like an award for saving the city. Yeah, and then the judge going, "Hey, Barry, you're, you're shit. the worst." Yeah. yeah, like I like the idea of that more in theory. I think in execution, I don't think it flowed too well. I think it was just the way the speeches were written. They didn't mm. line up the way they wanted them to. It almost feels like it was, yeah, it was a choice in the edit room rather than it was a choice beforehand to... Yeah, no, that sounds plausible. ...to write them that way. So it felt a bit weird and stilted. Uh, also, why is Barry, or The Flash, getting an award for this specifically? He like How many other times has he saved the city from even bigger things than this? Uh, there there ain't, ain't no awards. To be fair, I'm not sure he was getting an award for this specifically. Because Singh never referenced this exact event. He was just saying, oh, uh, you know, okay. he always he always All saves right, okay. us. He's always there for the first responders. <clears throat> I think it was just supposed to be a, a general award that just happened to be now. Do you know, I but, actually want Singh to find out that he's the Flash. Because I think it would have been an interesting dynamic if he's also in on it. You know when they asked Singh, oh, do you cover for Barry Allen? I'd have loved for him to say no, you know, the way he did. But he does because he knows that Barry's the Flash. That would have been so much more interesting. Yeah. But then, and, that's not... and, and then Barry made Singh commit perjury. That would have been better. Oh, uh, that would have been interesting. I, I wonder if it's just too similar to Cat knowing Supergirl's Kara. Like, you know, just the idea that yeah, he's figured it out. Yeah, Cat's not on trial. 
Sing that, was. That's that's true. I kind of want to find out. I I, I want the, just the, the humorous shock of it. Everyone else knows at this point, so why not? And the idea that he knows he can actually just call the Flash when he needs him. Because like, it's like, oh, well, now I can call Barry. Yeah, Joe does anyway. So yeah. well, why not have Sing do it? Yeah. Work. And now he won't complain when Barry's because he knows Barry will come in and do it in two minutes and leave again. He doesn't have to complain that he's late. Yeah, he won't even log him as late. He'll be just like, uh, I'll log him as on time. I know what he's doing. Ah, yeah, he'll cover for him. Yeah. I, I, I see potential. But, uh, that's, anyway, that's the uh, that's the flash. It is, yeah. Was there anything else worth talking about? I think it was. I think that was the... I'm good. All right, well, I guess that takes us on, <laughs> unfortunately. To the one that was squeezed in right before we came to record, and that is Arrow, which is season six, episode ten. It's called Divided. Do you know what the worst part about this is? Mm-hmm. We we finished watching this literally about five minutes before we started recording. I'm not sure I remember much. <laughs> well, you're forgetting that we took twenty minutes to try and sober you up first, but yeah. Well, there we go. So you're forgetting a lot. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, this this episode kind of exists to to properly split. I mean, the team are split anyway, but the, by the end, the, the, like the other the three, three teams, the yeah. new three have actually got their own base. They've taken over the Helix base, and Terrific and Wild Dog and Canary are like they're like team. Mm. I don't know, Canary is she leader? What? Yeah, they're the B team. Makes more sense. They're going to try to be the A team, though. They're going to try, but right now they're the B team. Although I prefer pretty much all of them as do i the stuff with them actually deciding on their own to go be a team is probably my favorite part of the episode like that, that stuff worked for me well enough and not a lot of stuff for, for me works in arrow but that stuff worked i think all three of them are better characters than diggle oliver and felicity mm-hmm. no i can i can cover that so the, the team figure out that they've, they've been bugged in the in the base because they're long uh, enough uh, they're, they're putting in one of the magic chips into Diggle's arm to try and fix his shakes, and they like they, they get an echo kind of thing as feedback. And I I immediately went, oh, it's a bug. And Curtis sort of brushed it off and went, ah, oh, that'll be nothing. Uh, no, I bet it's, I bet the bug. This is them finding yeah. the, the bug. In two to, minutes. To be fair, he did say that they're bugged immediately. You, I'm giving you credit. Oh me, all right. Yeah, okay. you. I when I said a... he, I was like, yeah, he did say that. Oh, right, I didn't realise you were speaking about me. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, I did. I'm, I'm yes. giving you credit for once. Alright, all right, that's, that's fine. Uh, so, 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 so they end up working out of Argos for a little bit and they they, they try and lure them into a trap and they, they there's this other mob boss, uh, the Barton, uh, you know, one of the Bartonellis who's around, who's played by an actor who's been on Travellers recently. Uh, so it was hard not to see, see him when I looked at him. Yeah, it was really jarring. And this is not a fault of the show. To be fair, to oh, it. it's not. No. Uh, that this show has many faults. This isn't one of them, but it was hard to just not see the character we'd just been watching. Yeah, and uh, so so it all becomes this thing, and ultimately, like Oliver tries to take on uh, what's the main bad guys? Caden James. Oh God, you you you're a better man than I. I looked. No, it was on my screen. On IMDb. Oh, okay. you, you, no, you're not. I knew, uh, I knew you weren't. <laughs> I didn't think about it. I just looked. I just I, found I, it. I, I, no, no way, you're a better man than me. The, the the noise of me going eh wasn't me stalling to think about it. It was me stalling to find the name in the list. <laughs> right, that doesn't make that clear. At, at least you're honest. So he goes to confront him. He finds him. He's going to take him out. He he has like a sort of magic rope arrow that strangles Black Siren <laughs> to the wall, so she can't scream at him. Uh, but a chain and a rope. Then we get this big reveal, though. This is when Oliver finds out that we've got this team of villains where the, the mob boss is there, Vigilante's there, uh, what's his face? Anatoly's there with his guys. Like, like so he's like, damn, okay, this sucks. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have let the team split up because we kind of need everyone now. It's Anatoly is definitely the best guy in the room at that point. Sure. Ah, uh, the villains, at least. Like yeah. He's definitely the best. I, I, I mean, I like Mae Clemerson, though, so I'm partial to... Uh, okay, fine, but Ant Holly's got the most character. Well, sure, but he's been there for, like, seasons, so I mean, <laughs> it makes sense that he's got the most character. Hey, technically so is Vigilante at this point. <laughs> that's true, true, true. <laughs> uh, uh, that, that's, that's a good point. We have a nice, we have an awkward uh, walk along the uh, the river with, uh, with Dinah. Uh, and Vigilante. I, I want to say his name is Victor, but I'm pretty sure that's wrong. Vincent. 
Oh, man. At least it was a V. It was ha- uh, oh, I was in the ballpark. Uh, they almost hold hands at one point and their hands separate and it's this romantic shot along the water. Like, I don't care about their romance at all. I just don't give a shit. I never have. Uh, it's, it's been the no, no one ever has. Worst part of her character. And she's generally fairly likeable. She's not got a lot going for her, but she's fine. But yeah. this was easily the, the worst part of her character was her relationship with him. Uh, but she finds out that he's, he's working with Caden James later on and she's all pissed about it and she ends up punching him in the face <laughs> when she sees him that again. That is fine. And then he like knocks her out by just flipping her on the ground really easily. It was, it was weird. Which, yeah. by the way, he's got mutant healing powers, by the by. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 like, I, I, I'm not going to lie, I missed this because, you know, drunk. Yeah. And no. you told me that and I was like, oh, okay. Because she handcuffs him to her. And I remember that. He flips her. He just rips his hand. And at first, I thought, oh, maybe the ha- that side of the handcuff wasn't, you know, clipped in yet, right? Yeah. And it, but then you see his hand; it's all covered in blood, like he'd actually ripped it through the handcuff. That you see, I remember seeing that. Yeah, it was all bloody. And then you see his wounds close, like, like that's Wolverine. The part I missed. It was exactly like Wolverine. It was like mutant healing. That that's the one part I really missed this episode, where you said, "Oh, so he heals," and I went. Okay, I missed something. <laughs> so, so that that's the thing. And basically, Oliver fails miserably when he tries to take out uh, Caden James. Uh, there is a some okay action here. There's like a there's a one or they, they they try to show that's off a little bad, bit. Yeah. But this one, it's, it's almost imagine like a little uh, uh, a little bunker, like like um, it's, it's not as deep as a World War One uh, <laughs> like. You know, trench is the trench. Way yeah, there you go. Uh, but it's it's like a little step, and all, all the bad, all the guys in this gang are all like hunched over. Uh, mm. uh, there's this little wall, and Oliver basically, conveniently, none of the people who are shooting at the other like, gang like turn to face Oliver until they're next up to fight him. Uh, but he basically goes down the row and like fights them all, and it's okay. So it's an impressive little one. It's just fine. It's cool. Yeah, it's 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 not the best the show's had. Not even the best it's had this season. But it's not bad. Yeah, yeah, that Deathstroke scene from uh, his episode was definitely ah, that's better. a standout, yeah. Uh, but no, it was it was fine. Like it was it was fine. Um, and, uh, so that's the thing happens. But he gets his ass kicked, and it, it leads to like the uh, the Bartonelli uh, getting shot uh, by Caden James. Uh, which, by the way, it reminds me there was a good joke in this episode. There was one good joke. There was from Felicity of all people. I know because uh, basically after he's made like this deal with the Bartonelli crime boss, he comes in, and if you remember, Helena Bartonelli's huntress, who we had way back in like season one or two. Um, and he comes in. He's like, "Oh yeah, well, I've, we're, we're going to get his help to lure them out." Uh, and they goes like, "We're in bed with the Bartonellis again, or we're in b- bed with the Bartonellis now." And then Felicity goes, "Hey, I seem to remember the last time you were in bed with the Bartonelli. It didn't go so well." I'm like, "You know what? That was a good joke." Yeah, because yeah. he did have sex with Huntress. That was a good joke. Uh, Credit where it's due. A bad joke, however, it was when uh, the Bartonelli crime boss like calls him in. Like, he sets off kind of like his, uh, his alarm or something to like you know mm. lure in Green Arrow. Uh, he's like, "Well, I'm sorry, there's no like phone I could call or uh, you know maybe a spotlight in the sky." And I'm like, "Oh my god!" It, it, force- no, no, he says a spotlight of sky with an arrow on it. He actually you know references the the symbol uh, itself. I'm like, Ugh. The, the 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 awkward bat signal reference it was cringe uh, worthy. Do you know what? This show has avoided that. Of all things, it's avoided that for a long time. And to throw it in here, as if I didn't have any more respect to lose for this show. Um, that said, there's one from season one that still pisses me off to this day. Which one? When John Barrowman actually suggests that he be called to Green uh, Arrow uh, at the oh, dinner dinner. table. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And here's the, here's the thing, though. Oliver shrugs, or st- I don't know what it says exactly, but he basically he, he kind it. of laughs it off. Yeah, he's like, haha, that's silly. Three seasons later, and the Green Arrow, as if he's never heard that phrase before. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't give Malcolm enough credit. Do you know what the problem is? Is like they try and set up like okay, they have to call like you know, Arsenal's the Red Arrow, right? They never really call him that, but like that that'd be how you'd set it up. They'd have to distinguish between the colors. So it's like, okay, he's the red one, I'm the green one. All right, Green Arrow and Red Arrow, simple. But they never go down that path. But instead, all I can think about when he's called Green Arrow is that oh no, he actually got that from the villain, and he laughed it off as if it was a stupid name. And now, and a couple of years secretly, later, was like, he was like, secretly, he went, when Malcolm said it inside, he was like, that's great. Now, I've just got to wait long enough yeah. for everyone to forget. <laughs> I never forget. Malcolm doesn't either. Uh, well, he's dead now, so. <laughs> Shut up. Don't remind me. 
Uh, which reminds me, Thea is back uh, at City Hall, and her subplot with Lance is basically, uh, you shouldn't believe that evil uh, Laurel can be redeemed, that's a bad idea, and then at the end of the episode, oh, by the way, I changed my mind, I'm going to help you uh, try and reach out to Laurel and like bring her over to the good side. Maybe we can find the good in her. Pretty much, but hey, we got Thea back. Mm-hmm. That's new. Oh, I just forgot something in S.H.I.E.L.D. that I didn't mention in that review. <laughs> Damn it! I'll tell you what it is after. But please, God I have no it. idea what you're on about. Is Sky had a line about? Oh, I mean, it was a bit rocky with my dad at first, but we got there. I'm like Rocky, Rock. Yeah. That's the word you use is Rocky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I anyway, recall. anyway. So yeah, so at the end, like Oliver and the original three try and say to the, the 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 new three, "Hey, we did mess up. I'm sorry. Let's team up because there's this like team of bad guys now. We have to work together." And the team all be- the new team basically say, sorry, but like there's no trust and you like, it doesn't matter what you say now, like we we just don't feel it yet. And then he's like, Yeah, but we're still gonna do things, we're still gonna be our own team, but and Oliver to his credit says, Well look good luck out there then. Like yeah, I, y- y- you do you. I-, I almost felt like Oliver should have said something like, Alright, fine, if you're your own team then great. But th- for the record, if you need backup ever we're here. We're yeah. here. Yeah, like, you know, if he says something like that, like, we will support you in your missions. Like, if if you need the help, we are we are cavalry to be called in mm-hmm. should you need it. Like that, that'd be interesting. So that, then, you know, uh, Curtis like redoes the helix base, and they've got a base of their own. Uh, so, yeah, I really hope there's an episode where we don't even see the rest of them. It's just those three doing their own mission. Oh, that'd probably be the best episode of the season. It would. It'd be such a fun little idea to do that. But hey, uh, so that's that's the thing. Uh, and is that basically it? I think that's it. It's as much as I remember. <laughs> uh, Oliver basically, do you know how he's not meant to be doing any of this because he promised his son he wouldn't. At one and point, then it's like, oh, the the baby Rosa. Yeah, so she's she, she's doing fine, and he likes her. But then he says, like, I promised I wouldn't do this, but we need to stop Kane James. I'm like, yeah, but there's always going to be a but. There's always going to be. A, we need yeah, to stop this. Like, we need ah, to stop well, that. This will do. We need, do. We need yeah. to save the world here. We need to save the city there. Blah, blah, blah. So, you know, that's going to blow up in his face, because of course it is. So, you know, bright side, we didn't have the awful kid in this. That is true. We did have Wild Dog's daughter, who is not awful, so that's fine. Better than all of us, son. By far. I wouldn't say she's particularly good, but she's not offensively bad, so she's instantly just better. Exactly. So that's, 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 that's good. To be fair, she didn't have enough for me to say she's good or bad. <laughs> she was eating cereal, and... She had, like, three or four yeah, lines. I don't know. The, pro- the problem with Oliver's kid is that he's put into all these dramatic scenes where we're supposed to care that he doesn't trust his dad or something like that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but I guess that's Arrow. That's, that's, I'm done. Right? I, was, I was done for the week. Because uh, we almost skipped Arrow and the decision was going to be just to do two episodes of Arrow next week. I am so glad we didn't because watching two of them next week was going to destroy us, I think. Oh, it probably would have done. So, uh, oh, and also it's probably worth mentioning, they theorised that the FBI lady only found out that Wild Dog was Wild Dog because Caden James was maybe leaking in for me. Because they, they, they mentioned that he's, he's had them tap for months and he's, all, yeah. and he's not been using it much, if, if at all. And he probably, maybe he leaked that. So that's maybe the, the ring theory. Yeah. Anyway, let's go on to something else. That's, so we have one... Something, something better. One last thing to uh, talk about, uh, and that is Young Justice Season 1, Episode 11. It's called Terrors. Of course, we started working our way through this just before Christmas uh, because Season 3 is coming later in the year and we want to be uh, we want to be ready for it. Uh, we want to be caught up. And uh, Well, I've seen it before, but you know, in case anyone has not been watching on the off-season, I mean, I, I, I get it. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> we, we have been watching. We watched the first 10 in the off-season. That's true. And we've been enjoying a lot. I've watched it before. Peter hasn't. Yeah, that was, this is all first time for me. Um, oh, Adrian Pastor was Hugo Strange. Oh, that's nice. Uh, I like him. No, I didn't. I didn't catch that. I'll Mor- be honest. Morgan Edge and so on. Yeah, as if we didn't need more Adrian Pastor in comic book shows. And and Talbot. Yeah, he's been in a lot of comic shows now. And Heroes wasn't based on a comic, but it was kind of inspired it's, by. It's comic inspired shows. by it, sure. Yeah. So. Oh, and that's right, James Remar. He's in this. Who's he in this one? Uh, he's a bunch of he's, he's Icicle Junior is probably the, the main one but he's a uh, okay. Joar Manke uh, Wilcox Cooper and Hauser he's a, he's a lot of small roles I couldn't name you most I can tell you who most of those are except Icicle Junior yeah but uh, he's in Black Lightning so that's that's why yes. that's why I'm noticing that and saying hey no, another no, person's no, no. in on more shows uh, so that's cool so 
uh, this episode, it's not like all the characters it focuses in on, uh, you know, uh, just mainly Superboy and Miss Martian, and they go undercover because they capture uh, the Terror Twins, but instead of sending them, and by the way, how do you pronounce the prison they go to? I say Bell Reeve, and everywhere I've ever seen says Bell Reeve, yeah. except this show says Bell Rev, and I hate it. I, I, have... I'm, I am with this show on Raish over Raz, but they are wrong on Bell Rev. No, no, Raz Al is better than Raish Al I, I have been saying Bell Reeve my entire life. So Me too. when they started saying Bell Rev in this, I'm like, what? what you... No, no, don't, don't worry. We're, okay. we're right on this one. Right. We're wrong. Good. Because, no, Bell Reeve. I, I will be calling it Bell Reeve. Thank you very much. Uh, but yeah, so so they go undercover. They, they obviously uh, <laughs> Connor's just kind of like got blonde. They're giving him blonde hair, and he's wearing the outfit. Whereas Miss Martian can just you know shape shift. Shape shift. Yeah, it's it's, and, it's convenient, that isn't it? Into the sister, and they go into the 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 the, the, the male and female rings, and they're like, uh, and she's like telepathically communicating with him, and the whole thing's um, basically trying to figure out why all the ice themed villains in episode one. So I, I love that they brought Deep that back. back yeah. yeah, that was cool. Uh, why they all attacked at the same time. So so we have Freeze, we have Captain Cold, uh, and we have... Who's the fourth one? Killer Frost, Killer Frost. and Ice Jr. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't... Oh, I mean, I already mentioned Ice Jr., but yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, that's the four. That's the four. And so they're, they're trying to figure uh, out, you know, what that what's going on. Um, and they don't really succeed, actually, that I think of it. They don't really... Uh, it, they kind of just wait till it happens and then go, oh, shit, this is what's happening. Yeah, yeah, because they're trying to escape and... They've all got like freeze, like wrist things that they've smuggled in, so that so that the cold villains who don't have it natural powers can can use that. Uh, Amanda Wall is pretty on point. Uh, the wall is uh, basically her. That's yep. cool. And uh, so I that, thought it was actually interesting. You you mentioned Hugo Strange was Adrian Pasta. It was interesting that Hugo Strange is not a villain as of yet. He hasn't been a Batman villain before this. This is you know. Yeah, I mean, just he's still undercover as a as Strange at this point. Yeah, um, I don't mind that. Like, I, I think it's okay to say, okay, maybe one or two Batman villains haven't happened yet. He, he's definitely the exception so far. Yeah, uh, that's okay because I mean, you know, he's going to be villainous ultimately. Yeah, he, yeah it's, he, it's fine. Because you find out by the end of the episode, he's, he was helping the escape attempt because he, you know, like he was trying to do something for the light. Which yeah. that's more my only complaint is that remember how I said okay, last time was a bit different because it was like Lex saying, oh, the light will be happy, and this episode ended with uh, Doctor Strange, sorry, Hugo Strange. Well, it's Doctor Strange, but you know what I mean. I said Doctor Strange, I went away. Oh, he is that. a doctor. Yeah, uh, that sounds like no, a Marvel he's character. A professor. Oh, he's Professor Hugo Strange. Yeah. I professor bet he's got... is above Doctor, right? I bet he's got a doctorate, though, right? Yeah, that's yeah. something. Professor's above Doctor. Yeah. But, uh, Strange is a uh, you know uh, the light will be happy with the results. I'm like, okay, so we did the exact same thing at the end. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, and of course we have A School seniors in the prison. He's like calling shots and. Uh, we get the big kiss with Connor and Miss Martian at the end when he's happy to see she's okay because he thinks she was Ice Cold Junior's like, oh, hey, that's your sister. Oh, yeah, because she's not shapeshifted back yet. Yeah, yeah. it's actually quite funny. Because uh, all the episodes, he's like, hey, your sister's pretty hot. Let's talk about how hot your sister is. Yeah. Uh, does he think that's going to go well with anyone? Like, anyone's Prob- okay with... I mean, he probably does, but it and, makes no sense. Unless you're, like, talking to like, the McBoyle family from It's Always Sunny, I feel like no one, no one's okay no. with that. No, they're not. So, hey, uh, but I, I thought it was a, a, a pretty funny. I, I was missing the rest of the team a little, but yeah, it wasn't a big deal. It, it was. I appreciate that it goes. Oh, this is their episode. This is what's happening this episode. It doesn't oh, just yeah. shoehorn them for the sake of it. I agree. But at the same time, I do miss the team dynamic. Yeah, I miss. I just, I just miss some of the characters. I feel like maybe this was just too small because I mean, Aqualad's like in the ship, but you don't see much of yeah. him. He's just kind of, you know, it cuts to him once or twice. Uh, but it's mainly just these two, and it's all these villain characters. Uh, but it was it was good though. Like, I don't want to sound too down on it because I actually t- I liked everything I was doing. I liked the therapy session and like Miss Martian poking at Connor's actual problems with Superman. Yeah. Uh, but you know, pretending it's about his you know the Terror Twins dad. Yeah, and yeah. No, Nolan North doing his southern accent is is fantastic. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, I can still tell it's him though, which is the great oh, me thing. Me too. Yeah. You can still tell it's Nolan North doing it. Um. The only time Nolan has done a voice that I couldn't tell it was him is his character in The Last of Us, which I won't, I won't spoil, just in case. No, no, I'm with you. But he's so disguised in that that role. He that, is, yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's 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 cool. Uh, but no, I really like that because it was actually poking at his character stuff and that he's, like, he's feeling like... Because so, 
I'm assuming we're going to get a resolution to the Superman stuff. Where yeah, he's... he he even has a moment with Ice School Junior where, as you know, he's like, "Oh yeah, you know, the, the, my dad's the big dog, and you know, I, I'm not really there, and you know, I don't really get mm. much time with him, and you you don't know how that feels." And and Superman's like, "Yeah, yeah, no, I get it." Yeah, no, it it, it makes sense. Uh, so yeah, I thought that stuff was fun, and then the uh, you know all, all the all the various Ice School Junior being an idiot, idiot and thinking he's helping turn keep the inhibitors off when he's actually helping turn them back on again. My favorite moment with Ice School Junior is when uh, Superboy and Miss Martian are kissing. He's like, "Dude, that's your sister," and then Miss Martian turns back. He's like, "Oh shit, it's you guys," and then he mm-hmm. doesn't even do it. He doesn't even freeze them. He's just like, "Okay, I've lost." But he says, "Dad's going to kill me." That's, yeah, that's yeah. The line, yeah. He's just he acknowledges that. Okay, I screwed up. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not winning this. Actually, I really like. There's that other guy. Uh, t- I'm not even sure. You can tell me who that is if you know. Happen to know the guy with the head thing on. He had like a I don't, helmet. Actually, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know who that is, but he he's like recognizing Superboy. He's like, "Hey, you're like," and he almost says it. And then Miss Martian is like, you know, behind like the other side of the glass or whatever, and she just mind like blocks him. He's like, "No." Nah. Yeah. Uh, oh, you're the terror guy, yeah. And he yeah, just yeah. Up. And then the next time, Superboy just knocks him out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's that's a fun running gag. That's, that's, that's it is. Thing. Uh, so no. And Dave Franco was the Riddler, huh? Really? Yeah. Huh. Okay. Cool. That's, uh, that's Riddler that. has a pretty small part, but he's set up at the end. He's going to come back because you know he's like, oh, Riddler escaped, escaped out yeah. of all of this. You know, he's the only one who got out. So I'm sure we're going to see him again at some point. Oh, obviously, yeah. Dad. I, especially if you've got Dave Franco doing the voice, I feel like you're planning for a yeah, bigger yeah. thing. Yeah, definitely. I, I don't necessarily... Like, again, I've not watched this since it aired, so I don't necessarily recall, but I'm sure he's back because, yeah. yeah I mean, one, you don't waste a riddle like that. Two, you don't waste an actor like that. I will say it, it's a bit weird seeing Riddler being spoken down to by Icicle. As if like, Icicle's the top dog and Riddler's this grunt. It is. I, I guess that's just the situation in Bell Reeve as yeah. opposed to Arkham. That's true. I do like that they compare it to Arkham because Freeze is like, oh, that's, that's an Arkham body, like when he's getting... Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. uh, he had to be transferred and, you know, make his... Yeah. He, he declared sane. So, so I, I like that. So it was a pretty good episode. Uh, and again, we're building the light. All yep. these people are working for the light. <laughs> so, Maybe a bit too much at this point. Yeah. Really. I mean, we got Lex, we got Raz, we got... Uh, Hugo Strange, we got um, Icicle. Icicle, yeah, um, and then before that we had we had t- whoever was before like Sportsmaster, uh, and uh, Black Manta, Black Black Manta, and tons of yeah. tons of villains. Basically every DC villain at this point. Uh, yeah, Cadmus. Yeah, basically they're working for the light. Everyone's working for the light. This is it's a big big thing. Uh, so no, uh, that is. That is a uh, that is that is uh, that is Young Justice. Yeah, yes. thank you. Uh, you can tell it's getting late. We're, we're late recording this this week, uh, but that that is that. Uh, which is the last the thing we're reviewing, which means we can pick. Uh, I, I don't think we count Young Justice in this because it's obviously a, a, a retro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Show. we go we go on the the new things this week. So we pick what our favorite episode uh, of the shows were this week. So we've got forty pick from uh, Supergirl, Flash, Arrow, and of course the new Black Lightning. Um. So I, I I asked a question. Uh, what which one is your pick? Uh, for me, it's Black Lightning. I thought it was you know fresh, surprising. I I went in with pretty low expectations, and it came out and you know it really surprised. Don't get me wrong, Supergirl had a very good episode. Yeah, I feel it's it, it, probably the best of its season. Yeah, I feel like Supergirl in any week before this, maybe excluding the crossover. But then why would it be on the week of the crossover? Because it'd have a crossover episode. But yeah. in any other week this season. Against any episode of Flash, Arrow, Legends, that Supergirl episode would have won for me. Yeah. But Black Lightning was such a good surprise, it was really solid in a lot of different ways to Supergirl, uh, that I can't help but kind of pick that as well. Uh, but, you know, Black Lightning, then Supergirl right after it. Like Yeah, I feel bad for Supergirl yeah. for not getting its chance to shine, but yeah, you say any other week. Yeah. Uh, and then Notch, Notch, Flash... Notch, 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 arrow. Still not enough notches for me, but yeah. Arrow. Sure, yeah. By the bomb. That's the thing. Uh, so obviously things will be sh- shaken up here. We've got Supergirl for three weeks uh, after this, and then that's getting replaced with Legends. So we'll have Legends, Flash, Black Lightning, Arrow for a good chunk of time, and then when Legends finishes, Supergirl comes back. Well, that'll be back with everything else for a little bit, 
Uh, and then, of course... It'll stuff, be on its own at the very end. It'll be on its own, yeah, uh, for a good bit at the start of the summer. But that's okay. That's cool. So, obviously, we'll be going back to some of the archive stuff as we, as we lose things uh, down the line. But that is, that is this week. That has been episode 16 of Television from the Multiverse. So... By all means, let us know what you thought of the episodes this week. Uh, like and subscribe, all the usual stuff. Get us on the Twitters, mailed underscore fuzz. Uh, or at DC Comics Podcast, if you specifically want DC Comics related stuff. Obviously, we do the comics version of this podcast, Comics from the Multiverse. Uh, that, that is getting up there on the numbers. We hit episode 87 this week, and episode 100 will be happening in April. And a very mm-hmm. monumental week. Yeah, we, we noticed that will be happening the week of Action Comics 1000. Which is in, we we couldn't have planned that better if we tried. That is insane, and they pushed that a month as well, and it lined up with us, which is the really insane part. But thank thank you DC. Yeah, thank, thanks very much. Uh, I don't give you a lot of shit to deal with times, but you, you you're okay. Yeah, you've, you've done us a right solid there. Uh, so that is, <laughs> that is us. Uh, get us on patreoncom slash TV if you want to support the show and the channel and everything we do. Uh, and get some bonuses along the way uh, but otherwise that is us so thank you once again so thank you very much keep watching DCTV we'll see you next time and always remember that sometimes we screw things up for the better <laughs>